Do you eat anything healthy when you're not filming Rate My Takeaway? Absolutely love salad. <laughs> I, I thought that was a joke. I didn't want to laugh, but <laughs> you're on death row, right? You're about to get the, the lethal cocktail of injections. Ooh. You uh, you get to choose a meal. What's it going to be? You used to be a magician. Yes. I've right, been a bit of a chunky lad. Used to go out with mates, you know. We'd be out clubbing out town and they're all buffed up and I'm there with my boobs. By 11 o'clock, I've got all birds around me thinking that I'm Mr. Wizard. To be honest, I don't really enjoy takeaways now. What's, what's the worst takeaway you've had? And I remember pulling my back and it got like warts on it or something like that. This ain't no burger, this. <laughs> I need to go to this place. <laughs> <laughs> I am Baby's Food. And I'm Josh Goodgen. Welcome back to the Breaking Bread Podcast, where each episode we have a good old-fashioned chinwag about some interesting topics, as well as occasionally being joined by a special guest. And on that topic, by insurmountable public demand, we have Mr. Rate My Takeaway. Now then, guys, how are you doing? You all right? Hey, he's here. He's here. <laughs> I'm here. I've got out of bed. Man, I'm loving it. The most re- requested guest we've ever had. Um, yeah. You'd be sad to learn, though, we are yet to get a Spotify deal. I know we're only sort of four weeks into this endeavour, but I right. thought we'd have had one by now. Hey, look, mate, this is it. This is going to take you to the top now. We're in it together. <laughs> That's what it Check is. out for an ego, I like it. Yeah. I wanted to just uh, start off by saying that those that are listening or watching, we're not going to repeat what was already said on the Happy Hour podcast, because as with most sort of the like... what podcast? The Happy Hour podcast. Never heard of it. Never Jack heard of it. Jack Mate's Happy Hour podcast. <laughs> That's right. You, you two have both been on there. Um, you, you can often see it, can't you, where a certain guest might go do various podcasts and they just sort of reiterate the same yeah. stories. And that means that basically you've got the same podcast on everybody's everybody's shows. Yeah. So we didn't want to do that. Um, but to kick it off and be original, what is your go-to meal deal? <laughs> What's my go-to meal deal? <laughs> Don't get started on that meal deal thing. Yeah. I'm joking, I'm joking. It's not. Um, what... what? <sighs> What we do want to start on, though, one thing that they did talk about on the Happy Hour podcast with you was the fact that you used to be a magician. Yes. So before we get into the food and rate my takeaway, right. I am a, like a, a huge magic fan. Yeah, yeah. And I know, like, we'll get into it later on the podcast. I know we spoke off air. We've done a bit of a few bits and bats together yeah. recently. But can you, uh, can you show us a bit of magic? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give you your wallet. I'll make you cast this. <laughs> no, no, so... Whoa, well, you're not oh, going to yeah, stand up it. and just spend your dick I'm around, are you? Well, that doesn't yeah. count. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> Grab me wand. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I'll, I'll do it with you then, Adam. So we've got two cards here. Right, okay. King of Arts, Nine of Clubs. Yes. Yeah. So if you can hold your hand out flat for us, all right, we'll put the king on there like that. Look, to do it around Mike here. So we get the nine, we take the nine out, put it on top. So we get the magic wallet then. So I used to sell this in a shop when I had a shop. You see, it was bestseller. So then you say, look, come on, bang, it's gone. So give us the nine back. We take it back, look, it's like bed up and it's disappeared. Oh, no, and it's, it's always jumping out back and it's on back at King now. Oh, my. There there that's go. actually blown my mind a little bit. Oh. There you go. Simple as that. You can tell me yeah. how, how you do that ten after the podcast? Ten quid I used to sell them for. Yeah? Bangers. Oh, all day long. That's worth more than ten quid. Yeah. So you didn't pub with your mates, that's it. You've got a round there, haven't you? Mate, where, yeah. like, where did all this start? <laughs> where did like where did magic so, start? So, obviously, like, growing up like every little kid, you know, you get your magic sets for Christmas and... You know, your granddad's making his fun fun disappear and giving it all this weird coins. And I, I just got into it. And then growing up and watching like sort of David Blaine and as I got older, I thought, right. So I went into a, a shop in Wakefield and met the two guys there. And I just started going in every week and it cost me an absolute fortune. And I'm talking like tens of thousands of pounds in end because it, it's, it can be really expensive if you want tens to Tens of it. thousands oh, of pounds? I'm telling you. So well, like, the, like, buying, buy, like buying magic tricks and stuff? Yeah. Yeah, right. So, it won't, you know, you can go and you can buy the little sets that, you know, are, are going to give you a bit of fun and a bit of fun with your family and your mates. But if you really want to get into it and you're serious, it takes so much dedication and time and you've got to learn the tricks, DVDs, books. You're talking books that can be 200 quid sometimes just to read a little, little bit of literature. Uh, but what I used to say to people is, is obviously you're not buying a trick. You're, you're getting a secret. That's what you're buying. So sometimes you can buy a magic trick and you open it up and you think, oh, my God, is that it? Yeah. But before opening that, you didn't know what to do. So yeah, you're, yeah. you're not buying a product. You're buying it. You're buying a secret. Uh, and it was just, it's just fun. It's just fun. I, lo- I love just to see people's faces and, yeah, you know, yeah. it's all about the pattern and how you put it together. And there's some magicians out there that, you know, are really, really good at it and great. And there's some out there that, you know, they can do the trick, but they've just not got that bit of a pizzazz. The showmanship. Yeah, yeah. That, and that's what it's about. Uh, and I know when I first started, I, I started to do kids' shows and stuff like that, birthday parties. And it was great, but I didn't get the self-satisfaction out of it because it's a different audience than to adults. So I would prefer to go along to 
a wedding or a barbecue, people have had a bit of pop inside them. You always get that Jack the lad that knows what he's doing. Yeah. You know, oh, I've, I've seen that before. So then I'd pick on him and make sure I make him look a complete plonker. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, and then, you know, the difference between the adults and the kids is, is the kids would just go, wow, yeah, and run off. And the adults are just sat there all night. Oh, oh, how did he do that? Oh, mate, you're great. And then me being a chubby lad, all right, being a bit of a chunky lad, used to go out with mates, you know, who'd be out clubbing out town and they're all buffed up and I'm there with man boobs, thinking, right, what can I do? Getting no attention whatsoever. So I'm thinking, right, take my cards out, do a few coin tricks. By 11 o'clock, I've got all birds around me thinking that I'm Mr. Wizard. They're all sat there scratching their heads thinking they've wasted five days in gym because they're all saying that best thing since sliced bread. So yeah, it's good fun. So that's the that's the trick to it though. For those, those lads out there that can't quite pull on a night yeah. out. Get yourself a deck of cards, crack on. <laughs> yeah. How old were you then when you first started? Because you must have been younger then, like obviously. So obviously like since I was a kid, but I got into it like proper serious and thought, right, I can you know, I can make some of this around about twenty two, right. twenty three and uh, I did a few online courses and then I went and did some courses where, I mean, I remember once I stayed in no hotel for three nights and this bloke was teaching us a full routine to do at a wedding. So it's what he'd done for years uh, uh -huh. and he'd, he'd done a good business out of it. So then he was passing that knowledge on. Uh, and then, like I say, the guys in the magic shop, they were just amazing and, and you go in there so helpful. And then I decided to set up a little magic shop myself in Barnsley and they were like, yeah, we'll help you out. Give me some stock and sell a return and... That's yeah, pretty cool. Yeah. We're getting like a two for one here because I think we're, we're going to be uh, talking to a, you know, uh, a YouTube entertainer and we're actually talking to that and a magician at the same time, that's which right, I did that, not realise. Yeah, so, that's uh, it. That's why, I mean, the magician thing, I, I'm so we interested We just talk that. about that for the whole podcast if it yeah, was yeah. Well, I've got, I've got a question. I thought it were like more... Uh, I thought like who you know or the sort of like the magic circle as yeah, it used yeah, to yeah. be called. Is, it, is that, is it a thing? So some, you have to be sort of like invited in. Is it, is it like a secret club or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you, you know, you've, you've got to be invited in. You've got to be sort of sponsored by people to get in there and you've got, you've got to be able to perform at a certain level. And then obviously it is all us hush on, on how things are done, this and other. Uh, and it's like, I think the most frustrating thing about the, the magic world is over the years, there's like a lot of, uh, Chinese ripoffs on on tricks and stuff, and yeah. then now with with YouTube and stuff like that, you can go and see how these tricks are done. Yeah. And it's it's like it's sort of taking the edge off, but it's all about for me. It's about that showmanship. And so, although when I'm watching other magicians, I probably know how it's done. It's how they've put it together for me, how they and how they come across. And I still get that wow factor today. So, like if somebody else performed a trick I'd done, and they put it together a lot better, I'd be like, wow. Well, that was spot on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's what it's about, isn't it? You want to be entertained. That's what it is. It's a, it's a level of entertainment. So you want that entertainment from people. And, you know, it, it can, and it's it's for all ages. do not matter how Absolutely, old you are yeah. with magic. There's always a trick that's going to amaze somebody at whatever age. So is and you're like a big kid here. Look at him. He's doing like a Cheshire cat here. Mate, I, I, wait, you're, I'm, you're going to sell me that trick later on. <laughs> I, absolutely I, love it like, I mean, I, obviously I've just had a kid and, and I've always watched magic and absolutely loved it. But now I'm like, I'd love to be able to just learn a bit of magic. And when, when obviously I heard the podcast uh, on Jack, mate, and I spoke to Danny recently about it, I'm like, I, I just want to, I want to learn a couple of tricks, you know, for when, yeah. when baby gets older. So a quick story for you is when I first started out, like sort of turning semi-professional with it and thought, right, I'm going to give this a go. I got a, a fire wallet. So obviously it's, it's what it is. So you open your wallet up and a big burst of flames drop out. <laughs> I've seen those actually, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I'm like, right, so I'm learning this. And then Mrs. comes into the kitchen. I says, here, love, watch this. Went like that. And I bought a cheap version of it. <laughs> so as I've gone like that, the actual gimmicks flew out, full of lighter fluid, all over the floor, burnt out garlic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it didn't go down well. You nearly so, burnt your house down. Yeah, and I learned from that moment then, yeah, let's just go and get the proper original gimmick and not buy these knockoffs because yeah, they're yeah. the ones that's going to kill you. That's terrifying. <laughs> Don't order it from wish.com. That's, <laughs> that's it. Would you ever, are you ever going to look at, we will get into your channel, but would you ever look at bringing magic into the channel um, as part of the, the, I guess, the performance of what you do yeah, on YouTube? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's some of the guys have talked about and said about bringing the magic in, but... It's uh, it's just one of those things at the moment with the channel. It's just running as it is, and I'm just a big fat jolly fella anyway. You know, I'll have a laugh with anyone, and uh, you know, getting getting the magic out. It's it's something that we'll probably do in future, and you know, <sighs> when when I get my podcast going and beat you on Spotify, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it'll take much. Really, it won't take much. <laughs> yeah, the level's pretty low. Did you see the first episode? Is called the time beard shit is pants. We yeah. want to set the tone straight off the bat. We so. set it well and truly with that one. Yeah, yeah, and that's it. Last question, how far did you did you take the, the magic, you know, like with shows? Like how, how far did you take it or did you expect to take it? What was the... 
it, so obviously I, I started off and I would like did a few weddings and I did a funeral once. But a which, funeral? Oh yeah. <laughs> so and that's what I thought. I'm thinking, right, I mean, what am I going to do here? You just saw the box in half, the coffin. Well, that's what I thought, you know. I, I didn't know if they wanted me to do some kind of resurrection spell or something like that. I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> you know, to be honest, it went a lot better than I thought it was. And it basically, the the, the, the person that had passed away went, wanted it to be a jolly occasion, wanted it to be people having being entertained, be, being fun. So... That, but it was a lot of pressure on me because I'm thinking, my just, God. I was, I was thinking, like, like imagine we turn up to that thinking, fucking hell, I'd like, what, <laughs> pardon my French. But like, you, you'd be thinking, do I, you know, like, do you make jokes? Do you That's like a, a funeral? Well, I'm, I, I thought to myself, I've got to try and make these people laugh. Shall I bring Mankini out? What, what shall I do? <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Well, I, I want it on record that um, if whatever happens, I snuff it. I want Danny there at the, at the wake performing some magic tricks. Does it guarantee that I'll be at the funeral? If, yeah. if, that, if, if I see some more tricks like that, I'll, I'll definitely be there. And we will do the sewing in half. It's not going to be bothered if it goes wrong. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Done at that point. Let's take it back then. Let's talk about the channel. Yeah. Can you give us a, a brief overview for those that are listening, thinking, why have they got a magician on an, on a, an audio-based podcast? Yeah. Tell us a little bit about, about you and the, and, and the channel. Yeah, so obviously, rate my takeaway. It's just me, big fat jolly fella, travelling around you know, the UK and we've been over to Dublin and all this, just eating takeaways, getting takeaways and giving my opinion. And and that's what I try to get over most is it's my opinion. So people are coming on to the platform and saying, try this, try that. And then I go along and I say to them, yeah, you know, it's, it's a solid 10. A lot of people say, well, yeah, you give out these, these tens all the time. Uh, but it's, it's recommendations what, what I'm going off. So yeah, that's sort of it really. And it's just, it's just gone crazy. It's gone absolutely nuts. The t-shirt kind of explains yeah, what, 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 what Danny does on the tin, you know, like rates, rates, takeaways. It's been merch. Which, um, <laughs> do you have to, I, I, I've got a question actually. Do you have to kind of, ch- do, you, do you find, have you ever um, spend any, we're diving into the creator stuff a little bit early, but yeah. do you ever spend any time looking at like your geographical, like where, where people are watching from? So yeah, predominantly yeah. it'll, be, it'll well, be the UK, but. I'll be honest with you, I don't. No. Because I've just, you know, for me, the, the whole thing of the channel, it's fun. Yeah. I, lo- I love doing it and I love going out and I love speaking to people. So I like people who come up to me and talk about all that geographical stuff and all the stuff behind the scenes. I leave it to other guys there, so so all that out. But I know that obviously, you know, we have got a strong following, obviously based in Leeds. Yeah. Uh, but then it, it is growing up and down the country and then, uh, you know, we've got a strong following in America and Australia. I was, I was gonna say, the reason I came on to it, I was, I was going to say, you, you, you should rebrand in America, call it Rate My Takeout, right? Because they call it yeah. Takeout. <laughs> So when we do the American, it's rate my take. You heard it here first. <laughs> yeah, when you when you go out there, like, you have to call the, the series rate my take. Is it Con ready to start up another uh, another Facebook page? <laughs> yeah, he's off. He's, he's tip tapping already, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, what, so what? Like, it, I, obviously, I know you, you you've got we've, we've got some of your team, but like, what was the sort of inspiration to start this? I know that um, it originally started as a Facebook page, didn't it? Rate my takeaway. Yeah, yeah. So it, it was a Facebook page. The guys had started it off and they were posting picture content and people were putting on the takeaways saying how good or bad they were. A lot of the time, you know, people are like just hammering it. You know, oh, yeah. that's all right, load of junk. Uh, and they just approached me. I mean, I, I'd done a, a couple of uh, videos that went viral about COVID, about bog rolls and yeah. this and other. So, you know, I knew the guys and they said, do you fancy doing a, a, a video and, and just see how it goes? So, yeah, we, we did one and it went all right. Then we did another one and it started to pick up a little bit on Facebook. And, and as you know yourself, you know, trolls jump in and give you a bit of grief, but, you know. <laughs> That's all is, part of the fun, though. Yeah, it is what it is, isn't it? Uh, and then obviously, you know, like this year, it, we started uploading onto YouTube and it just went crazy. We got the, the viral video of me sat outside some old bird's house having a breakfast and it just went <laughs> nuts. I remember, I remember seeing that kicking off because it was the same time that we launched Ben's channel um, and we were all talking about it we were like, he didn't follow any any perceived rules of YouTube of what we all knew yeah. of, as for, like what we know of, of creating content because we like yeah. we look at it and we'll break it down into like thumbnails, titles. Like, is it going to grab some desire? Is the title compelling? Then you watch the video. Is it like you know like the Mr. Beast style, like punchy, bang, 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 bang? And it was sort of like raw content shot on your phone. And we were like, how's this? Like, how has it happened? You know? But we've spoke about it since then and gone. YouTube itself as a platform is actually built for creators like you, not so much like a, a professional yeah. videographer. It's not created for that. It's for the it's for the the masses to be able to generate content and put it on there. And I think that's where the appeal that's one of the main appeals of your channel is like it's just it's yeah. it's it's you. People are there for you for the content as opposed to what we sometimes dive too much into, which is like the 
aesthetics or color grades or like we spoke this, this, this kind of goes in direct contrast i don't know if it was the last episode or, or number two or whatever it was but we, t- we talked a little bit about about creating and we said actually and that we talked a lot about, you know a lot about cameras and stuff like that and color grade and all the really technical stuff but what we actually said as well was if you want to get into it there's no barrier yeah. to entry and uh, danny's story is one that really um you know vindicates that point of view because that it was so it's been so amazing to see what's happened with your channel because it kind of go, it flies in the face of all these things that you, t- you told about, you know, you spend so much time on you, don't making them look all jazzy. Yeah. And, you know, make sure you're shooting on you with your gimbal and your, your whatever you, your Sony day seven S three and whatnot. And, um, I, I don't think I've ever seen gro- like growth in a YouTube channel as quick as yours across any. And it, 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 I think, um, for me anyway, w- what makes it really cool is y- not that I want to start a cultural war here, but like you're not American, right? Yeah. And no, that, that's almost like, a, 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 it's almost the case that it's harder if, you, if you're not, if that makes sense, mm-hmm. to, if you don't conform to a certain type of character. So to see your kind of pretty lo-fi stuff, like no offense or anything, but that is working for you, right? You shoot yeah, on yeah. the phone and it's like kind of run and gun. And it, it's cool to see that you can still access the platform and do well shooting like that, you know, and making that type of content. Yeah, yeah. I think it's amazing, yeah. I, I think as well is, because, you know, I've got no background whatsoever in, in, in filming, videography, nothing like that. You know what I mean? So it was just sort of j- just my personality and the way that I am. And I think that's what comes across. And, yeah. Yeah, you yeah. know, there's no, there's no fakeness about that. It's just me being me and we just leave the camera rolling. And, you know, but when I'm, I'm doing all this daft singing in can and stuff, that is what I do. That is what I do in real life. That, make, that so, makes two of us. Yeah. I'm down for that. <laughs> but so like for me as well, you, you look back 20 years ago, and on TV with all game shows and, you know, Dallas and Hair Team and all that, all these these productions, what they've put together. And now the most popular TV is reality TV because Absolutely, that's what yeah. people want to see. So be it a TV star or somebody reality. And then it's like musicians. You look now like the past 10, 15 years, some of the best artists have come from things like X Factor because it's just your blogs off at street. So it's like Ollie Merz as such, you know, painting, decorating. Adam doing I feel like I'm, I'm just kind yeah. of, I'm, I'm just looking at the camera like, nah, come on, Ollie Merz, some of the best artists. <laughs> he's made a few quid, hasn't he? But do you know what I mean? It's, it, they've just pulled somebody off at street. He's had a bit of a sing song and, yeah. and then he's up there. And I think that's the way that it's changing. What people want to see is they want to see real life. They don't, no disrespect to you and all your no, camera no. gear. And, no, yeah, we, let's, let's disrespect Josh. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know, you spent, <laughs> spent a bit of money in, in, in trying to get your career going and all this. But at the end of the day, <laughs> We, we'll just, get, we just need a phone and a microphone and that's it, mate. We're done. We'll get on to my career later on because <laughs> I think between you, you've absolutely destroyed it. But we'll talk about <laughs> that a bit, later. <laughs> a bit later on. I mean, just going back to your channel, I mean, what was it like to see that growth? Because, I mean, it's it's unimaginable sort of scale to see like the amount of views that you were getting at the beginning. I mean, still now you're getting unbelievable views. Um, what were it like to see that process sort of come to fruition? Like, did you ever expect it or were it just a bit of a passion project that, that escalated? What was that? Yeah, I mean, like I said, it was just, let's just give this a go and, and, and see how it goes. And then obviously like the, the, the nine, nine or 10 month on Facebook, it was just like slow progress and people were coming on and they were enjoying it. They weren't enjoying it. And it for me, it was just a bit of fun. It was like, yeah, yeah you know, I've got a day job. Let's just crack on with this. What was the day job? Going. So I was working for a, a local butchers, right. so in town, you know, delivering and a bit of sales work. So it was like, still do that. And then we'd do a video on my day off. And then obviously when it went viral on, on YouTube, it was just, oh my God, what's going on? And then, you know, I remember the first time I went into White Rose and there were me and kids and we're walking around and this this young lad and last come up and says, oh my God, <laughs> am I take away? Can I have a photo? And I just like looked at my daughter and I thought, what is going on here? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, and, and then that just went on and on, on and on. And like the first like four or five weeks, I was like, oh my God, it's starting to a point where I, I can't go anywhere. I suppose that must have been even more difficult for you because I'm mean, like, when I, I, when that happens to me, it's still odd now. I, I mean, I enjoy it, right? To meet people. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm sure you do, like people that subscribe to your content. The only way I think you can kind of give a little back is by, you know, spending time talking Definitely. to them and stuff. But for me, like it was kind of, it was almost like a gradual thing, you know, I'd kind of get people here and there and now it's way more common. But I suppose for you, especially given that your audience is predominantly domestic, you know, in, in, in England yeah. and stuff, and because it happened so quickly, you know, you went in a couple of months from being essentially unknown to being known by lots of people, it must have been hard to kind of wrap your head around that, especially if you're going out places in public with your family. Yeah, so it was like, uh, you know, like the, the first few times it was like, I, I felt embarrassed at first because I'm thinking, yeah, yeah, yeah. Why, why do you want a picture with me? Yeah. I'm just like you. I'm, I'm getting up and going to work tomorrow. You know, yeah. what's what what's so special about this? And then 
it's it's seeing the joy that I bring to people and, yeah. and that's really rewarding and people will comment on the channel and they'll say you've helped me through some tough times and I, you know I get messages about people's mental health and the fact that they just look forward to seeing a video or I've had people in the videos that have come up and said oh, I've struggled with this and then I've commented on it with them and said look you know just try and battle through you know just yeah. live life one step at a time get up do the do the best you can and be the best you can be and for me the growth of the channel because it's, it's having such an impact on people like that, it's just unreal. And like I say, I mean, I, I were around here with Josh yesterday and some were walking dog as I pulled up and, and <laughs> chased me down road for a photo. Uh, it's it's nuts. It's crazy. It is amazing. Like to see, I mean, we'll, talk, we'll touch on it a bit later on, but to see that uh, how much joy it does bring to people. Yeah. And like people are sort of starstruck and we've, uh, Adam and I have spoke about it before. And I, that's what I, for, for my content that I make, for YouTube, I enjoy sort of breaking down the fourth wall, like showing people behind the scenes of whatever a production is, you know, or like when we, we went to London or with Ben's channel, even with yourself, we've shot a bit behind the scenes stuff that'll be coming out obviously yeah, yeah. when this this goes live. And I like to show that because, you know, it, people can get starstruck, but they are just another human being yeah. at the end of the day, whether they're the celebrity, royalty, whatever, they are just another human. And, and you sort of embody that re like really well, especially being in public with you, like you put them at ease like yeah, yeah. really quickly and that's quite a it's quite I a mean, skill th there's times when I, like people have walked past me and i can see them talking and i, I think i did it when i were you the other yeah. day and, and they're talking but they won't approach so i'll just approach them and yeah. go now then how are you doing so but it's like today i've come in here today i'm starstruck not for you because you're not but <laughs> obviously <laughs> you know seeing like see, see your, your no, channel on. before one, one quick question am i as am i taller or shorter <laughs> than you expected in person if, I, if I'm honest with you, I, I'm just a bit stuck by the bungle jumper that you're wearing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Matt, when, when, you know why I'm wearing this? We're not making any money from this uh, th from this uh, this podcast. I think the landlord's turned the central heating off, <laughs> so I just want to be nice and toasty today. I, that, that's why. That's but what yeah. it is. But no, t to be honest, you're a little bit shorter than what I thought. Fuck! I knew I should have mentioned that. <laughs> he walked in. It just gives you more fuel. How far away is he? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's a bit of a Max and Paddy joke for you there. Well, I thought you were wearing platforms on video or something <laughs> like that. You know, he took his shoes off of you. <laughs> the, uh, that's what I wanted to touch on. How often do you get uh, compared to Peter Kay? Every day. Every day. And, and, I mean, and that's been, obviously, since Peter Kay went about. So even when I was doing the magic, people were comparing me to Peter Kay. Peter Kay's like a, a much beloved um, kind of national treasure though, isn't it? So, so it's is not, Danny though. Yeah, like, yeah, wow. So it's not a bad thing. No, yeah, absolutely it's not. not. I, mean. I mean, the only issue I've got is he's been following me around for years, nicking all my gear. That's what he's been doing. You know, I mentioned garlic bread, he takes that. <laughs> you know, I mean, I mean, to be honest, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a better looking than him. I don't know. You know what I mean? You know, we've both got a bit of a chub on and he's lost can, a bit of Can Peter Kay do magic tricks? I well, don't think so. So, I mean, that speaks volumes in itself. Yeah, that's it. I mean, I could be the new Max and Paddy. We could, we could be Max and Paddy. I, ha we? I hated that show though, so no. <laughs> <gasps> At the risk of offending some people. How dare I'm you? I'm not a big Peter <laughs> K fan. How dare you? Yeah. We'll do your dentist a favour. <laughs> <laughs> You'd no, know Max if you watched it. Oh, right. yeah. Anyway, it. for the channel then, so what's the ambitions for the gr for the for the, for the gr growth of the channel? Or what, what's, what have we got planned in store for Rate My Takeaway? I mean, how many, how many subscribers are you at now? So I think it's 430,000 now. Yeah, so that's, you that's know, boss, I mean, man. you're not far off. Hey, I'm, uh, <laughs> he's, he's exactly at ten percent, I think, of what. Yeah. Not even ten percent. Why are you hating on One percent of what you what you're at. You I love mean, one of them I, soon. I'm right? looking. I'm thinking to myself, you've actually put a stronger bulb in that one as well. Aren't you? <laughs> you are trying to brighten it up. <laughs> I mean, I was going to bring mine along, but uh, yeah, that's yeah. a bright I said, dick I said, you, competition. This you, it. You could have um, my old silver one. You could just. I, I, Danny's yeah. got the the new silver one, which is actually kind of like that, but silver, yeah. so it actually looks plush. The old one is like a fucking frisbee. Does it were it quite an achievement to get that first plaque? You know, as a creator, because I mean, like you're a little bit like you've been around the block for a while now, and you're like 1.5 million. So you're a bit like when he brought that in, you might uh, well, at 1.6 million. You might as well yeah. throw, <laughs> I, I, honestly, you might as well throw it at me and gone, yeah, yeah, stick it up wall. And I'm like, and I remember no joke. So before we did the first podcast, I was like, my dad came in to, to put them on the wall, and my dad didn't give a shit. He's like, you know, like scratched it and all sorts, put it up wall, and I'm like. <laughs> Dad, that, that's like a life's work for like, that's Adam's life's work there. And he's like, I right, berate. And that was your attitude as well. Like, it, is, it is a replica though. So I mean, yeah. how did it feel it. for you to get that first, that first plaque? It was amazing because like I said, it, it's not, you know, 
I, I'm one of these people that just went on Facebook. I'm 42 years old, so, you know, like Snapchatting and all that, Instagram, I didn't, I didn't have a clue. <laughs> you know, I can just get my head around Facebook and see what my mates are doing down at pub and that's it. So in a short space of time to, to get that first plaque, it, it was unreal. And I remember like it come and we're in office and we're like, oh my God. And then we, we did big opening down at... Uh, Middleton Pond, you know, I thought, let's go somewhere classy. Let's get to Miggy. <laughs> Miggy get, Pond. That's it. Get where, where, <laughs> where there's all the old bikes and fishing rods all, all thrown in. But no, it, you know, it were good and it's fun. And, and the response that I got from, from the fans were just amazing. How, how long did it take for the, the plaque to arrive from the point at which you hit 100,000? Do you know what? It wasn't that long. No. It, it, I think it was only like Maybe two or three you're, weeks. You're in there like the, the YouTube like top echelon creators thing. It took me about six weeks to get mine. Yeah, well, I just I just bailed them up. I says, now there's no chance call. we can get that what, sorted. What's, what's she called? The woman that that, that, um, that does all the liaison? Something. Uh, yes, I, mean, was, I, I, I forget I, her name. But I've had to draw my own plaque. How the fuck am I supposed <laughs> yeah, to know Yeah, I've got a clue. <laughs> I'll get my kids down here. They'll colour it in for you. It'll look a lot better than that, mate. We can sharpen it up once I can, yeah. once I can knock a few yeah. numbers off. It. I mean, okay. you know, I would say with your editing skills, you could have done something better, but I know they're not that good, so <laughs> you've done all right then. <laughs> You're giving away the rest of the show, yeah? <laughs> oh, dear. But whilst we're whilst talking about your channel and creating videos, is there anything difficult about the, the, the channel and, and the content creation side of it, like logistically or, you know, because the your upload schedule at the beginning was like relentless it almost looked like you were uploading twice a day which i mean you do twice a week and it takes you all week you know yeah that absolutely batters me doing it twice yeah. like it's a lot of so it's, but i mean it's, it's different i suppose if you have a team you you have a little bit more freedom to to make more stuff yeah i mean obviously at the beginning of the uploads for for, for youtube we'd already got a stock of footage that we'd put on facebook so those first like few weeks it was like yeah let's bang on every day and then all of a sudden we thought hey <laughs> We've only been filming Slow like down. once or twice a week here yeah, and it, this content needs to be on every day. So then we're like, right, we need to get out. And then I'm like, God, I, don't know if I can do this. You know what I mean? I, yeah. I've looked down there and I've not seen it for a month. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> so it we're like, we, we just come up with a plan and, and obviously working out because I, I need to be, be at home and spend time with my family. So that that's key to me that I've got to be at home and spending time with yeah. the kids. Uh, so it was working it out between the guys how we can do this so we're like right well we'll do filming distance on this day and we'll do local on this day and then we'll do this this day and then it gives me and to be honest doing this now I've never spent as much time with my kids it's yeah. allowed me to spend more time That's with nice. them That's which nice. is, is is lovely uh, and yeah but the, the schedule and the whole thing of I mean a lot of people and, and probably you've had this people oh, you've got an easy job it ain't easy, you know, just the travelling alone and the mental strain it puts on you sometimes, just thinking about it and then thinking about what you're doing. And then obviously sometimes, obviously I don't finish finish off all my meals like you had them and I don't do the big challenges. Yeah. And there's no way I could do anything like that because I'm a fat lad, but I'm not built for eating loads of food. It's just not me. Uh, so, you know, and I know sometimes when I've done two reviews in the space of three hours and I've only had a bit of a nibble, I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> so I can only imagine what it's like for you having to eat that mountain. I look at it and I'm passing out before he's even got down a third, <laughs> to be honest. I mean, you touched on it there about leaving food. And I know you, like we've, we mentioned it on the Bake Off episode about the, them leaving food. And I want to say it as like, I'll, I'll take the words out of your mouth, but well, it's not quite out of your mouth, but when- you paraphrase me. You paraphrase paraphrase. But when people are talking about yours in spe specifically saying, oh, you, you know, commenting the trolls, leave, you leave all this food. Yeah, yeah. The man has- Paid for it out. He's hard earned money. Yeah. If he wants to buy something and put it straight in the bin, who gives a shit? Like, as like consumers of all these products anyway, a lot of stuff gets thrown away on the daily basis. So it must be frustrating to see, like, you're just trying to create content and uh, bring joy to people. Yeah. And there's people there commenting saying, nah, it's going to leave all this food. So it's like, obviously, with, with, with the situation with COVID, it's made it difficult because before, you know, I'd pass the food off to somebody, you know, yeah. would you want this? And But a lot of the time, my kids will have it. Yeah. All right. Or even cameraman will jump in, editor might have a bit. So we try it as little waste yeah, yeah. as possible. I think it's not even the point, though, is it? It's the fact that you're in, you're, you're, because you're a, a focal point for, for public perception, right? It, it, the, the, to, to me, the issue is that pe people should know that it's, they don't necessarily know you're wasting the food, right? They, they, yeah. They're quick to jump before and, and judge before you've just said that. Sometimes I give it to my kids, sometimes to me, yeah. I take it home, maybe I'll give it to somebody that's nearby because you're always on the street, aren't you? You're always out and about. Yeah, and you, yeah. I know you've got big crowds now. 
So the whole point is, what, I don't understand why, we don't want to go over the whole troll thing again, we've done that before, <laughs> but I don't understand why you would co- comment on somebody's video saying the food's been wasted when you don't know that even that it has. If it has, if, like who cares still? But I mean, the fact of the matter is people, they're always willing to judge without context. And I think it's hard sometimes for, for people, you know, especially in, in the public eye, even at a low level like you and me, you know, the, 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 there's that level of judgment there for, for really no reason. Yeah, I mean, the judge, obviously the judgment's there. You know, the, the world's in a crisis. People are struggling to eat. I understand that. But, but but what we're doing is we're providing entertainment to people. You know, we're providing knowledge. You know, in your channel, you're showing all these big food challenges. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and mine, I'm, I'm giving that that bit of, bit of banter and yeah. every day. And it, you know, sometimes when the trolls come on, I, I'm, I'm with you. I'm like, why, why are you judging when you don't know the full story? And it's like, there's a review coming up and... I won't spot it too much, but a lad come up and, you know, we were talking about one of the dishes I was trying and, and I, I, you know, I was hesitant. Do you know what? I'm just going to give it to him. Yeah. So it'll come up in the channel and you'll see it. And I thought, do you know, if I get if I get ridiculed for it, I do, you know what I mean? Well, you gave it to someone, did you? Well, you have to wait and see. But, oh, right. So. But it's, you know, you can but see yeah. it. You can, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. You can see on my face, I'm thinking, you know, what, what, what and I'm thinking, why, why do I have to sit here and think if somebody's hungry? Why do I have to think, can I give it him or not? Absolutely, yeah. You, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like, I know we've got this with COVID and, you know, at the end of the day, it, you know, it, if somebody wants some food all right, and they're starving, as a human being, you know what's going on. Give them the food, do you, do you, do you know what 100%, I mean? Yeah. There's, there's always going to be somebody that complains about something. I'm, I'm just having that opinion now that like there's, there's no point worried about it. So you, it, yeah. Regardless of which way you go, somebody's going to complain about it, so... It's yeah. that you always focus on the the negative. Like you'll get, I, I mean, between you, you must get like hundreds of thousands of positive comments. But then your your eyes always drawn to that one bad one, oh. and you can you can dwell on it a little bit sometimes, it's like can't you? The guy say to me, you know, when when I first started out, and a, a lot there were a lot of negative comments in the beginning when I first started coming onto the platform, especially like on Facebook. Uh, and it, you know, a lot of them went over my head, but they were just like the odd few went, and the odd few were, were people that just lived down the road. I'm thinking, yeah, let me come knock on your door and say that. Yeah, yeah. Let's have a dance. Let's have a dance. You know, I, I'm think, I thought, are these guys for real? I mean, they're saying, hey, look at the size of him. He's massive. And I'm thinking, yeah, do you not know I've got a mirror in my house? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm not stupid. I can see how big I am. I've been a big lad all my life. You know what I mean? And it, it, if, if I'm, I'm one of these, if I'm happy, you know, if you're happy as you are, Crack on in life, you know what I mean? I don't think that you should be judged in the way that you look if you're a big fatty like me or a being poor like Adam. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Paul's quite polite, I'll tell nah, you. but that. you're right, you know, like if you haven't got up nice to say, you shouldn't say no at all. But I think opinions like assholes, especially on the internet, it's just full of them. Like it's just full of people like what is just fire their opinion off with the behind the anonymity. Yeah. Um just to But I don't I don't get involved in it. I never I've never, I've never like commented back. No. Yeah. Oh, I, I do that sometimes. I'm, yeah, I'm like, he I, gets I, a bit fruity sometimes. You, you, usually, like, yeah, the best way is to just kind of starve them of attention because all they want is the reply, right? Yeah, yeah. So if you just you don't do that, which is what I do most of the time, that's fine. But sometimes I'll be a bit mischievous. But it normally just makes me laugh. Well, I, I, I've got a question though. Let's go like we'll go do the old shit sandwich. Like, what's the worst comment you've ever had? And we'll then go for what's the best comment. <sighs> to, to be honest, it's all, all a lot of them just go over my head. Right. Okay. They, they go over my head. Uh, what kind of I, blend into one? I think the I think the the worst the one that that hit home most was obviously I, I lost my my partner in February and I'm spending as much time as I can with my kids and people come on and say they've lost their mum stop eating this food because they're going to lose their dad oh fucking that's, sorry that, that's that that's one that that, that that gets me because I think to myself you're judging me on, on what you're seeing there you don't know what I'm doing off camera you don't know what Absolutely, I'm doing yeah, yeah. To be like, like I said I've always been a big lad. All right, but I know what my limits are, and and and, and as a you know, with the rate my takeaway team, they support me yeah, as yeah. much as they can to make sure that I'm not. I mean, you've spoke about this before, haven't you? Just the the logistics of Adam's eating schedule yeah. and the like, the calories you need in to sustain your whatever weight you're at now versus like you know, if you're in a deficit, you can lose weight, and if you're in a positive, you're going to gain weight. So you've tried to educate an audience how many times on that? Uh, I've, I've given up now, you know, like I've <laughs> fully just given up. But um, it's, 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 it's not even the point. It was, it's good to come back to the, the kind of the salient issue there is the fact that it doesn't matter. Like you, you don't get to judge people, right? I wouldn't walk down the street, see a guy that's overweight and say, listen, lad, you should probably lose some weight. It's rude, right? Above anything else, it's rude. It's none of your business, right? So whatever you want to do with your life, 
you do it right and that, that's what i don't understand about um the, what I, I don't get what kind of nourishment they get from it you know yeah. like w- when they type that what what good do they get buzz from it or something maybe it's just something i don't understand yeah. but i think that's, that's good they must have their own internal demons to be that sort of bitter in my I opinion think, yeah i, think, I so. think that's what it is a lot of people you know they're not happy with themselves if they're quick to judge yeah somebody else then obviously they've got something going on in their life that, that that's not not satisfying enough for them so that they feel the need to deflect onto somebody else's yeah, you know? probably you can't be throwing stones and glass houses can you so no. on the flip side then we can dwell on the negatives but like tell me some of the positive comments that you've had because i, I mean some of the stuff that adam's told me about his channel and, and the effects it's had on people is yeah. absolutely unbelievable and that's the sort of thing that like it's inspirational for creators coming up but it's also must be the drive for you guys to keep going but no i mean the, the most positive for me is is like i touched on it before about mental health and uh you know people saying that that i've helped them through covid and through through being in lockdown and they've been watching the videos and it, it, it's lifted them uh so that for me is, is brilliant and people have approached me in the street i remember one lad i was outside at a sandwich shop and he come up and he says my head's not being in in the right place so i just had a little conversation with him and it just it just made his day and you know i think as as, as a, not just as a country but as a population now we don't talk to each other not a lot of people know. It's like I go back when I was a kid, you know, 30, yeah. 30 years ago, and I knew my neighbour there, and I knew my neighbour there, I knew Bob Down Street. Now you can live somewhere 10 years and you'll never know who lives next door. An alarm goes off. Nobody goes to the window anymore or goes out. And, you know, for me, with social media, this is the way that people are getting yeah, what they need now. Yeah. They, they, they're getting that, that security, and that's what sort of come across and people saying that they're just looking forward to it. But families as well. It's like that people will send videos of a three-year-old kid stood at front at telly, oh, you yeah. know, pulling up his nappy going, knacker cracker. <laughs> that's, that's the best, isn't it? That's the stuff that, like, people, I think, probably don't realise how what effect that has on you as a, yeah. as a creator, you know, because... Um, yeah, when you when you get the, those videos from families or whatever, and or from people saying, "I'm looking forward to the video," you know, I, you know, I've, I've had a bad day at work or whatever, something yeah. minor like that. That people are looking forward to what you do. It's just like having a TV show, right? And it's it's kind of satisfies that creative need, but you kind of feel, I think, a, a kind of a greater purpose. And it's good if you're ever having like low moments or whatever, yeah. which we all have, to get those messages and think, right, okay, well, I'm gonna keep going, you know. And uh, well, that's yeah. it. I mean, pe- people send those messages to me, and they say. You've helped us through all this. You've helped us through as a family, as an individual. But what they don't realise is is how much this has helped me. So them watching, them commenting has helped me and my family through the most difficult time anybody could ever have. Yeah. And, you know, with, with the kids, they love the fact that, you know, I'm on YouTube, you know, oh, my dad's a YouTuber. And it's like, let's go, like, shut up. And the next thing, oh, your dad's a YouTuber. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it just gives them something to, to give. So when people say I've helped them through these tough times, that, you know, what I say back is, you've helped me. Just yeah. knowing that you're there watching. And when, like you say, you, you just get that, you know, it's like uh, you, you just feel like a weight's been lifted. Or you read that comment and it gives you a little butterfly and you think, oh, God, you know, I hope they're doing all right. And, you know, and and it's like if I replied to every comment, I probably won't be able to film an episode ever again yeah. because there's that many that come in. But you know, I do read them. So if I don't reply to people, I apologise. But I do read them and I take everything you know to art, and it's just amazing. Yeah, that, that's absolutely beautiful. Like, I think, um, like you said, I remember when I didn't know much about you until I heard you on the Jack Mate podcast, and like the energy that you give off in that podcast were yeah. like it were infectious, and that's why when we said like when we start this podcast, we wanted you to be like the first guest, especially because you you are literally just down the road to work from the studio. Yeah, um, but. Like, yeah, the the sort of message that you put out there. You obviously you you know uh, Josh Warrington's dad, Sean. Yeah, oh. Sean's Sean's got like a similar vibe. Like you two are very similar in that in yeah, that sense. Yeah, yeah. Like you, you go into a room and it lights up, and you 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 bring the atmosphere, you bring the chat. You you've, you've got the patter whether you're in the public or you know behind closed doors. I think it's it's uh, it's, yeah, it's a mean, talent. It's a I, I, me and Sean we did a bit of work last year together. We were, we were delivering, um, we were driving around in van. And it was like Leeds' as answer to Chuckle Brothers. We were just bouncing off each other. And it's like, we, you know, we, we couldn't be from two different walks of life if we tried, you know what I mean? Yeah. But like, we just come together and we just had that bit of banter. And it's great. And, it, you know, we Sean, he's got so many stories to tell. As, it, as Josh it, said, he could talk a glass eye to sleep, could Sean. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I must say, if, if you ever want some belly pork, right, 
he is your man. He, he, he cooks some belly pot for us down at Butchers and he is a right cook and I swear, God, it will be beautiful. He makes this gravy that's unreal. Well, what he does. 10 out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's a 10 from me. 10 from me. Well, I mean... If, I think if you're ever going to start a podcast, he yeah. needs to be the host with you. Yeah. Oh. Like, that would be absolutely amazing. Yeah, you I would can... never need a guest, ever. I think we'd just be talking to each other about just random junk. and uh, you know, It'd just turn into something ridiculously good because he is a funny bloke and I do love him. He's a cracker, he's young. <laughs> Um, one, uh, like, you're like a mythical creature in Morley. And uh, you know what it's like when whispers start happening, when celebrities are in town and whatnot, and we yeah. work out of here. And I remember when you were sort of on the come up, somebody said, I can't remember who it was, somebody said to me, have you seen that Rate My Takeaway? He's on telly in his Hyundai or whatever he's driving, but I've seen him flying around Morley in a bright green Range Rover. And I was like, oh, I wonder if it's all perception. The illusion has been oh, shattered. Yeah, wonder, uh, you're a magician, so I thought. So I'm going to ask you now, for the record, have you got a bright green Range Rover? Not a chance. Right? <laughs> Not a chance. Uh, I think where that's come from is... We, we did an episode at the Big Red Bus in Leeds. And as, as we pulled up, so we're doing the, the car scene and we're pulling up. As we pulled up, there's this bright yellow SVR parked up, right? So I jumps out and I'm thinking, hey, this looks all right. So I legs it upstairs to the top of this bus and there's this little fella sat there eating his dinner. And I says, hey, mate, I says, is that your car outside? He says, yeah, yeah. I said, I don't suppose I could borrow it just to do a bit of filming with me jumping out of that car. He just chuck keys over, no problem. I'm thinking, hey, up 100 grand more, here I'm off. <laughs> Job's done. So he said to me, yeah, just don't move, seat her out. I went, all right, now bearing in mind, he's about the same size as you, right? <laughs> Perfect so, size for a human being then, yeah? <laughs> the cameraman is absolutely laughing his head off because I'm thinking at one point, I'm going to need butter. To get in here <laughs> because the steering wheel, I'm not kidding you, it, basically it increased my bus size because it rammed in. And the scene was just me opening the door and getting out. So I got in this, but obviously when you get there, there's mud all over the floor, right? And I didn't realise it. So I'm kicking his door open and thinking, I've got it open. When I've looked round, there I have just mucked up this SVR inside. There was just mud everywhere. I was hooked, slammed on, chucked him key back. <laughs> <laughs> Off we go. So yeah, I think that's where the story come from. Uh, and like everybody went on them, but one person actually said, bye heck. Danny's got a transformer. Because the, the shot He's not is, that good of a magician. Yeah, the shot is, I mean, can I know then, guys? I'm off to the big red bus and you can see I undie badge and you can see I undie window. And the next thing, SVR is like, Mike has got Bumblebee, yeah? It's all transformer. It's just transformed into an SVR. So, yes, yeah, so I've not got a big green Land Rover. Right, so we'll put that that myth to uh, to bed. Not then. yet. You know, Spotify, you never know when we get on. <laughs> oh. When we're all like, so you start your podcast with Sean. We'll, I mean, we, we must be weeks away from the Spotify deal, so we could be able to afford a bright green. Many, many weeks, yeah. <laughs> a bright green Range Rover. Um, it's the race to the green Range Rover. That's what we'll do. That's what we're going to call it. Yeah, the race to the Range Rover. I'm not going to lie. We, with the growth of your channel and your team behind you, I reckon you've got a better chance than us. <laughs> no, no. We got Spotify charts once. That was it. Maybe this will get us back in, I reckon. I you reckon, know. yeah, by, by You're the golden ticket. Yeah, there you go. Uh, so just on, on your, uh, you said, now then, guys, knacker cracker. What these sayings, where have they come from? And what, like, a knacker cracker? What are they, what is a knacker cracker? Well, it's it's your backside, but, you know, that's, that's you know, put your knacker cracker away. And it's, again, it's, these are just phrases that I use all the time in everyday life. I always have done. I'm like, well, I'll put knacker cracker away. <laughs> <laughs> so, I love, everyone loves a catchphrase on YouTube. My, my, I don't even really have, um, Catchphrases, I guess per se, but um, catchphrase. I th yeah, I mean, there, there are things that you, I don't know. You just kind of you, you, th things that you kind of take from real life and like types of things that you do as you, as uh, as a real human kind of come across in your videos, don't they? Yeah. So, I, but I think like if, if people tag onto a catchphrase, that can that does you no harm, right? People, people like that kind of thing. So oh. it's like that, like the now then guys back on the road again. So these are the kind of times of types of videos that they'll send me with kids. You know, I think there were one one little kid in America flying down his drive in a little red car, back on the road again. <laughs> like this, you know what I mean? Absolutely <laughs> class. And then, like I say, the amount of kids are like, put knacker cracker away. But like that, with that saying, when we went over to Dublin, I got warning messages, emails, and not saying, just be careful when you go to Dublin. Oh, what for? Do not say knacker cracker. Like, well, for the travelling community, it's offensive. I'm like, all right. So as soon as I got there, Proper full-on traveller comes up. I went, now then, pal, knock a cracker away. 
didn't mutter, didn't mutter a word to me. Oh, so you I just thought he'd test it. You'd yeah, I just tell thought, him. look at size of him. <laughs> <laughs> but you yeah. Do, that would have been a good clickbait video, though. You say to your cameraman, get filming just in case he punches <laughs> me in the face. Yeah, well, that was, a, that was a plan. I'm thinking, right, A and E tonight, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but no, so like, the, the, you know, the cat's for it, they've not, I've not meant them to be catchphrases. Yeah. But it's it's just what I say. But then obviously as the channel's gone on now, I mean, I say it anyway. Yeah, it just kind of it develops. And it, like, I think the first time I said, like, let's get it in a normal voice, just as kind of like, let's, you know, let's, yeah. let's get into it. And then it, over time it morphs and you just mess around and stuff like that. With, and with and it, now don't people you? don't know yeah. what you say. I mean, if you don't say it, people get mad now. Like there were a bunch of like, yeah. episodes that I shot in, the, in American Canada where I didn't say it because it, it's hard to be understood out there as it is, you know. I don't want to exclaim some nonsense at the top of my voice. Um, so, but yeah, people get mad if I, if I don't say stuff. No, so no if they can't understand you, You've I'm going to no have chance, a whale of a time over there, Anna. So is, is Rate My Takeaway going to go international then? It's an Hopefully. exclusive. We've got yeah. an exclusive there. Yeah, yeah. It's, you know, obviously once travel restrictions are, are, are right. And obviously, again, it, it, it's, it's, it, it gets down to me being able to, to, to spend time with my family and, and the kids and Absolutely. how we can integrate them into this. But yeah, you know, we want to go to to America, Australia. Uh, we've been invited over to Singapore, and you know, there's people saying, "Come and stay over here." I mean, so the one last week, somebody offered me a Villa, Valencia, or something like that. I'm thinking, oh, you know, the other half live. I don't get any of those perks. I'm still <laughs> waiting for those it. YouTube perks, you know, like the first class uh, plane ticket, like yeah. Casey and I start, and the the free cars, like you, um, <laughs> like you. Why you got a free car? Yeah, he's, he's got a free, he's got a free car. Oh yeah, he's getting no, that somewhere. So yeah, he hasn't got a plaque, but he's got a free car. Yeah, I know which one I'd rather. Have. <laughs> it's not green, Ran green Range Rover. Did you not see it outside? Yeah, I like orange. Thinking. Anyway, you're wearing Rate My Takeaway merchandise, so the catchphrase is going to go onto the Rate My Takeaway yeah, yeah. merch. Like, yeah. tell us a bit about this because did you bring us? A t you didn't bring us any t-shirts. This oh, is the first sample. All oh, right, okay. I thought we right. get Come on. I'll be honest. Are you going to fire us one over? It was a wash sample because I said because obviously being a big guy. All right, I struggle to find clothes. You know, I go into Primark and you pick up a double XL, and it only just fits over my arm. You know, I, I don't know they've got modelling these things, but they're nowhere near the sizes they should be. Yeah. So one of the things I wanted, because obviously I've got a, you know, I get people messaging me saying, "Danny, where did you get your top from? I'm a big lad like you, and I want to get this." So I said, "You know, I need to do a wash test." And they're all looking at me, "What are you on about?" I says, "Well, I'll buy t-shirts from Tazda." Tazda. Put them in wash. <laughs> Tazda. <laughs> put, put them in wash a couple of times and that's it. They've shrunk. They've gone. Yeah, yeah. You know, you bend over, your back knacker crackers out. And, <laughs> so I wanted to make sure. But no, we've got, we've got. Uh, I think it's like uh, just over a week, we've, we've got a merch store. So by the time this is live, it'll be, your yeah. merchandise will be live. Hopefully, yeah. This isn't a shameless plug, but I actually brought it. It wasn't Danny that brought this up. But what well, I mean, like, so uh, were people crying out for this then? Yeah, so they've been asking us for ages now. Uh, obviously, I, Outside of, of Rate My Takeaway, I'm involved with a, a local rugby club in Morley. I'm the chairman of the rugby club for oh, kids. Right. Uh, so hey, I, I just sponsored a kids' rugby team. Which oh, one? Yeah. Uh, Norman and Knights. All right. Well, you should have done Morley Knights. That's what you should have done. <laughs> yeah, do they play each other? Because I'll be fucking... They we, will do now. Right, so when you, We're you, on it, Paul. Right, when, when, oh. that, when that happens, right, I'll be in the, I'll be in the dugout for uh, Norman Knights. We actually Norman played Knights. them, I think, a couple of... About, about three or four weeks ago. That'd be ace, yes, wouldn't it? Yeah, I, I don't know why I just threw that in there. A bit of a brain fart. But yeah, the, uh, I got asked to sponsor them. So I thought, yeah, they only wanted like 400 quid or something. So I thought, yeah, go on. Yeah, and my, my, my nephew... Play, well, not nephew, because I'm not married to Linz, but he plays for the team. Not yet. We'll talk afterwards. There's plenty cut, of sponsorship. Cut, 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 cut that shit out, Mike. I'll take your money, no problem. Uh, so what it is being involved with the rugby, obviously the the guys that produce all the kits and the hoodies and stuff. When when we were filming through COVID, I had a, a face mask with now they're on, and he, he put that on, and then I've got a couple of tops with it on as well. You want to so, be careful with that. You don't want to be associated with Jimmy Savile. That's why I always say it once. <laughs> oh, is it <laughs> really? Yeah. Because obviously I just go, now then, back up road again. Now then, how are you doing? Yeah. Because he's what? Now then, now then. Yeah. 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 No, no. So, I'm a bit young for Jimmy Savile, but I understand. No, like... I don't think you would have been too young for Jimmy Savile. <laughs> 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 Cut that out. <laughs> Cut that shit back. <laughs> That's got to stay in now. Uh, so, so, yeah, so we, we had, I had this branded up and just, just put it on and... Uh, People just started messaging, where can we get this? Where can we get this? And it's just going nuts. So we said, like, look, we're going to have to get some merch. But it's been one of those things that, you know, we we're just so focused on the channel and, 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 and going with the flow of trying to get these out that we just sort of put it on back burner. And now, like, you know, we thought, right, let's, let's try and get some merch out there. So because we, we didn't even have a logo on a brand. We were that basic. Yeah. So we've, we've created the, the, the logo now. And then we have got some slogans on there. And we've got a special offer one we're going to be doing through December, which is going to be a charity one. 
uh, because I'm involved. I, I do a lot of charity work anyway. I like to do a lot of stuff when I work down at Butchers. We did a lot of stuff for charity yeah. and, uh, for the homeless and stuff like that. So, so yeah. Tell us a bit about that then. What's the what's the charity merchandise? What's just because obviously this will be out by the time that's that's yeah, live. Yeah. So what is that? What's the? So w- there's going to be just one item that, that through December all, all profits are going to be going to the Trussell Trust, uh, which is obviously for. Uh, they, they want to basically get rid of food banks and stuff like that. They want to help people to be able to yeah, yeah. food and deliver it and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, obviously being in food and, and doing what we're doing with takeaways and stuff, it's like, right, well, let's give back to that charity. And then we've also uh, want to support Mind as well for mental health yeah. because, again, you know, through the channel, it's helping people in, in that situation. So, you know, we're going to be doing that through December and then come the new year, we'll be looking at other ways. And we've got other ideas that we're going to do, charity events uh, and lots of stuff for the future that we're going to be doing. So I want to work with as much people as we can. And Because I, I just, I, I'm one of these that uh, I like to give back, I like to see. So like I said, we, you know, being involved with kids rugby, it's just a great feeling that, you know, the, the rugby club there, I mean, last year there were six players, we've now got 115 Wow. over a year because we just pushed it so much cheating a bit I think you're only supposed to have a 15 man squad but yeah. <laughs> all the different age groups <laughs> no that's good it's, it's nice that you're actually like um, it's not, it's sort of the philanthropy side of, of that being a public figure in it you know like it's, yeah. it's that's that's really nice that you're, you're able to give back yeah, yeah. Um, so last couple of questions I've got for you before we go on to the next section of the, yeah. of the podcast which is going to be really exciting because we've got a few exclusives um, in the local area so within a couple of miles give us the best and worst takeaways because you're the man to you're the man in the know. Oh. I, I wanted to know, like nationally, what's the best? What, what the best ones? because oh. well, we yeah. I, I don't. All right, I let's ho- do I'm both. Ho- hoping people just from Leeds don't listen to this pod, <laughs> this podcast. All right, so let's do locally and then nationally. Yeah, and they so might overlap. They might do. To, to, to be us, honest, give us the best takeaway, the best goddamn takeaway that you've ever eaten at. So the best one to, to, at the moment is nibble. Nibble. Yeah. Where's was that one at? Hull. Believe it or not, in Hull. Right. What do they, what kind of food do they do? So it's it's like it's like a like a gourmet cafe if you like. It's really weird to find. And you go in, and they've got like four or five professional chefs in this cafe. You know, doing your a, a poached egg on toast, and it, it just comes out and it's just full of flavour. And I had a uh, uh, they, did, they did a curry like a curry wrap that was beautiful, but everything there just well presented. You know, it, it cost a little bit more than what the average takeaway would, but I don't mind paying for it yeah. when it was quality stuff and the yeah. flavours were great. And then like the other one is like people always say, what what's your best one? And it just, every time I just say Abdul's. I don't know if you've been to Abdul's. I, I saw you doing your quite really subscribe yeah. video down there. That's yeah. always like a... It's uh, a curry house, a yeah. curry uh, takeaway down in Wakefield. Wakefield. Mm. Yeah, and it's amazing. It, it's just so fresh. Isn't it? And I mean, yeah. they've got like... 30 cooking stations. So you order your curry and it's cooked on it. So they've got one little bloke running around washing up, bless him. Uh, but the, you know, the kebabs, the tat tat kebab, gorgeous, beautiful flavour, but it, it, the freshness of the food were great. I would have never in my life ordered a takeaway if I hadn't have watched the Abdul's. So I, we'd never been to Abdul's and I watched the video and you mentioned this tat tat kebab. Yeah. And I thought, I said to, Dan, I said to Danielle and they said, like, well, we should have a, a takeaway. I've, I've seen, see this guy on YouTube. Down, it's only down, it's that one junction that M1. Let's, we'll get that. And I ordered the Tac Tac Kebab. And when I went to pick it up, you were there, you caught a yeah. million video. But it was absolutely amazing. It was yeah. absolutely delicious. Yeah. So, yeah, Abdul's is probably yeah, the best is, Indian yeah, around here, isn't it? Yeah, they don't do big things. <laughs> <laughs> but, but if you just want to go and try it out, it is nice. It's beautiful. So that's nationally and lo- no, locally. What's, what's the worst takeaway you've had? So the worst one I've had is is, is the <laughs> the one up at Scotland, the uh, munch box, as they call it. And it, it, I went in and, you know, I walked through the door and you got a waft of grease. That, you know, you, you're thinking to yourself, <laughs> Lovely oh, grease. Oh, yeah, it hasn't been changed for a while, this fryer. And so I remember it, we, we sat down and we picked this lovely picturesque lake. You know, it, it was great. And thinking, this is all right. So I sat down, got my chair out, with ducks on the thing. And I, <laughs> I opened this box up. And it, it, it yeah, like a steam train, the smell of this thing. And I'm thinking, oh, my God. And there, there were chips in it. There were a piece of fish. There were battered sausage, uh, battered burgers. Oh, was it like one of those, like a pizza box with a bunch of stuff in it? Like a, yeah. a, oh, it was a What was the name Munchbox. of the place? The place was called Munchbox. Oh, or, I forgot what it's called. Oh, it, it was a Munchbox from a place. Right, yeah, okay, yeah. I get it, I get it. I'm and with they it. got in what they call a pizza crunch. Yeah. So basically, they go to Taz, they get the cheapest pizza, <laughs> dip it in batter, <laughs> bang it in the fryer. So I'm, I'm going through this, and I mean, I, I pull. I remember I pulled the batter off the sausage, 
and it looked like a dead finger. <laughs> it was as white as you. <laughs> He's the one. <laughs> <to be> white. <laughs> right, but it, the burger. Now I bit this burger. I'm thinking, well, because obviously working in a butcher's, you know, I sort of know what I'm thinking to myself. This, this ain't no burger. This. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember pulling matter back and it had got like warts on it or something. Uh, and I, I think I said at the time, you can get that sorted out down clinic because <laughs> it, it just looked horrible. But the whole thing just tasted of like stale oil. The pizza, when, when I squeezed it, you know, it was like I was getting shampoo out for me. Eh? You know, it was really bad. And I, I gave it a score of one. And I well, upped, at least it didn't get zero. Well, I so. upped it to a two. I oh. gave it the one because for the fact that there was, you know, a genius trying to feed a family for a tenner. I thought it's great. You know, if yeah. people are on hard times, 10 quid for all that food, it's, it's great. Mm-hmm. So I give it one for that. And then I upped it to a two because you got a bottle of iron brew. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, you got to get, yeah, that's like yeah, half of the that, course in Scotland. That, that's a point on its own in it. Iron <laughs> brew. Yeah. Have you ever had it where you've, you've gone to a, a restaurant or a, a challenge and it, the food's been that bad that you physically cannot complete it? Yeah. One age, there's always one that comes to mind. Um, I, I won't, I won't mention the place, name, but, can you but um, yeah, it was d- d- down south. Um, and it was, a. to be fair, it was a, a massive breakfast. It must've been like 60, 70 items on this breakfast. Right. And it cost like 15 quid. So you were never going to get like top quality yeah. food. Right. But the, I mean, the, I don't even know what the bacon was. Like I took one bite. It's the only time like in the middle of, uh, of doing some eating that I've had to go to the toilet cause I need to like instantly uh, you know, poo. Yeah, yeah poo. I mean, the first the first episode of this podcast was about you shitting yourself. I know. Why you you keep coming back to a, a theme. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't want to make it all That's about it. poop. But um, yeah, I remember that time because I didn't really know if I was going to throw up or like def- defecate. Um, but uh, yeah, that was just because of the quality of food, not because it was so much food. It was just really, really bad. But it's quite. I'm fortunate. It's quite rare that that happens. What, what was the staff's reaction to that? Like, did you say to him, "Look, this is inedible"? No, I'm, I'm not. I'm not a diva, man. Like, even if the, I, w- I probably didn't even say the food was bad. Like on the video, I'm not the kind of because you, you never places might have a bad day, you know. Or mm-hmm. did you finish I, the video? I finished the video, yeah. Oh, and right, I, okay. and I, um, I don't know if it's still on the channel. I think it's one that has a copyright strike actually, so I think I deleted it. But it was like a big breakfast, um, and I, 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 I didn't finish the chat. I just said, "Well, I fail, you know, fair and square." But yeah, I failed because the food was like horrendous. And that almost never happens to me. I can pretty much eat almost anything. Um, but that's the only one time I remember. That was, must be about six years ago now. It was a long time ago. Yeah. Well, in the spirit of uh, good and bad food, um, if you're willing to partake, we've actually put an order in for a, a brunch sandwich right. from the highest and lowest rated place in so the you, local area. We're going to put me to the test. Yeah, so we're we're going to test, test your palate. Your, right? Test your skills here, because you are Mr. Takeaway, right? The king of takeaways. Yeah. We've got two takeaways for you. One is really, really good. The other one, it's not terrible, but it's the lowest rated in right. the local area. Yeah, let's give it a go. Transition. Right, so we have here one item from the worst reviewed takeaway place in the local area and one item from the best. Um, now, they're both breakfast items, so they might be, you know, better or worse places out there depending on the time of day but for breakfast we got the best and the worst danny here king of takeaways is gonna try each one of them and and tell us if he knows which is the best and which is the, the worst right well let's get in so it, then, in there. who's gonna <laughs> you right, well, let's have a look at this one first it's a funny shape bun it looks like a it tortoise I, I was thinking that myself <laughs> baker's gonna be a bit weird there isn't he yeah so let's have a... it's, like, it's like those what do they have the, those uh, you know when you buy um chocolates and they're out of shape misfits ah yeah the misfit sandwich. Cutting inside. What, what have we got thing? inside us? So I'm gonna have a look now. Let's have a look. So we've got bit of an egg. <laughs> bit of an egg. Black pudding. Oh, I love black Ooh, pudding. Nice. Who doesn't? Bacon, yeah. sausage, tomatoes. There's some beans knocking about. Bit of mushroom. It's there's, full. there's one bean on the edge. Yeah. <laughs> I think one side's tomato. Oh no. Yep. Yeah, one side's got tomatoes on. One side's got beans on. Oh, nice. I like the construction of that. So like you got, well, if you don't like tomatoes, you don't get it, you know, yeah. all over the... Uh, yeah. Yeah. I can't stand beans in a pot. Can't yeah. Stand, in a pot? When, when you have a breakfast, plate. yeah. Beans in a pot. It drives me nuts. <laughs> Why put beans in a pot? It's just yeah, been easy, Danny. Don't flip the table. I'm it's telling just you. Beans. Oh, yeah, it's <laughs> getting angry now. You know what I don't like, though? Like, we went on a shoot, actually. We had Mike were talking about it. This must be like a Yorkshire thing. Why is the tin tomatoes in a sandwich? Because like that's going to destroy the yeah, integrity of this. It's soggy at bottom. Is it? Yeah, it's a soggy bottom. Ah. Just in tomatoes. All right, let's have soggy a look. Soggy bottom. I had a soggy bottom a on the episode <laughs> one. Oh, look at that! That was a powerful bite. I think there's a career, a competitive career in here. A competitive eating career <laughs> yeah, in you. Yeah. I'm gonna have to have a bit of black pudding. Look at that, man. That's a that's that's a proper bite. 
You saying what's it, what's it taste like? It's all right. It's not bad. Paint a, paint a real picture for me there. Soggy, I, feel like I, feel, I, feel, I feel like I'm eating it. Soggy, <laughs> soggy bottom. All right. The sausage just tastes like a, a, a basic standard cafe sausage. So yeah. a, ch- a cheap sausage. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like them, is, nice it Richmond, it. is it Richmond ones where they're just like? Oh, don't say that. Mrs. Beard loves Richmond sausages. She'll, you'll you'll be fucking up a sponsorship deal. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The bread cake. It's not bad. It's nice and soft. But it, you know, it's it's not a wow factor sandwich. Right. For me, it's just a basic breakfast breakfast sandwich. What are we going to call that out of ten then? And you can feel free to be a little bit more uh, discerning on, on the podcast. You don't have to give it like a 10 or a 9 or whatever. <laughs> no, no. I mean, to be honest, how much was it? Do you know how much it was? Uh, we don't. We, we can get, we can, maybe we'll put that on screen afterwards. But Yeah, um, because when, I, when I'm doing the review, I'm taking all this into account oh, as well. Yeah. I want to see. What it, w- it wasn't too, it wasn't too expensive. I know because I paid for it. So uh, yeah. you're welcome, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, for, for a basic sandwich on that one, I'd, I'd go in at an eight on that. Yeah, Ooh, yeah, yeah. It looks like a, 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 a like a solid workies butty. Do you know, like yeah. Yeah. ten o'clock on a Friday, you know, apprentice comes around. What, what are you having? Oh, I'll have a, a sausage and tomato sandwich. That's that. That's what I'd expect to see. I it, think. Yeah. it looks to me more like it. T- I bet it tastes good, but the, like it doesn't look that great on the outside, which is not always a bad yeah. thing. The sausage, look, you know, it looks a bit overcooked. Mm. A, a touch, yeah, yeah, but it's it's all right. But again, it's it's your, your basic standard. It's better than the one that you had in Scotland, definitely. Right. right? Do you want to do you want to try the second item? The second one. So we've got some little sides. Yeah, look little, at these bad boys. Yeah, it's posh. That. I think they're like tater tots, which is weird. Oh, little ash browns. Little ash browns. Oh well, yeah, tater tots. Yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> is that American? Yeah, that good one. That normally, if they come like if they're tiny, right, and they're in like a cylinder shape, they call them tater tots. Don't they? They are basically ash browns. What in America? Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna say I'm a Barnsley lad, so for me, <laughs> it's, it's like an ash brown. It's what yeah, it, is, it is ash brown. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> That's another time. <laughs> another one of them. Right. Right, but you, you don't don't factor in the, the hash browns to it because no, that's got to be part of it. <laughs> he's, well, he's the reviewer. Surely that's got to be part of the, the gig. Yeah, that's right. it. That's brown to 10. Here we go. This is a bit of a more, it's the, the bread looks more substantial to yeah. me. So the bread, it's, uh, it, well, you can tell straight away, it's a better quality bread, can't yeah, you? Looking at it, looks good, does that? Yeah, like? Well, wait until you, you bite into it. Yeah. <laughs> Sheer batter. Look at that. So it looks a decent sandwich. We've got the, the cross section on that is impressive. Look at that. Oh, well. So we've got some, oh, nice grilled bacon as well. Look at that, with a grill line There's on there. browns in the sandwich. Ash browns in sandwich. Oh, what? Bit of cheese, Ash sausage and egg. So again, you've got no tomatoes there. Softening it up, have you? These right, guys know. Oh, yeah. Sound like the Churchill dog, you know, from the <laughs> carrier. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, that's the one. Is that all right, that? Yeah. Oh, it's so, it. so if this is the worst one, I need to go to this place <laughs> <laughs> because uh, that's amazing. So the, the bread itself, absolutely gorgeous. The sausages, they've got a really, really nice flavor. Like, so the, the, what I call the standard cafe sausage, I don't really think there's a, a flavor to them. Yeah. These ones, you can taste the herbs, you can taste what they've put in. Absolutely gorgeous. The bacon's grilled off nice. That bit of cheese in there, that does it well. So I'm cracking on with this. You can't beat a bit of cheese. Look at that, eh? That does it does smell good. It does look good. Mm. It, it it looks more impressive. Um, I I th- I reckon that I think that looks like it tastes better. Though. It don't. No. No. Well, I, I trust you. You're the you're the takeaway boss. That one. It's just like a a quick easy breakfast in a bread cake. That one's got a bit more thing. That's like sort of like what I got from that nibble. That's like that's a bit more premium. Them yeah. browns are bang on, you know. They, well, they look nice actually. But so that, that we're saying no, that was eight out of ten. Tater tots or something. Yeah. <laughs> I was just trying to add a little bit of colour there. I mean, they're technically uh, tater tots <laughs> if they're in that shape. Anyway, that's that's an eight out of ten. What are we saying for this one? I, I give this a ten. A ten. A ten out of ten. That's Should a have got some kind of like, ten ding, from ding, ding, Danny. Ding, ding. Mm. Wow. Right. So uh, we're gonna throw it over to Mike over there in the corner. He's gonna tell us which one is the bad one, which one's a good one. Right. So just for the camera there. So which one do you think definitively is the bad one? That's the bad one. And that's the good one. I, th- I think. Uh, You'd be mistaken. Oh, am I? Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's uh, the one on the on your left, camera right, is uh, the worst review. Is it? Is that the worst? Yeah, yeah. And the one on the right, um, camera left, is uh, yeah. That actually, that that got the place that sells that got five stars 
on Just Eat. This place had uh, three, just I think it's slightly less than three stars. Never. But so. you, have, you have to think, that could, they could be factoring into that. That did take a little bit longer to arrive. Ooh, yeah, because it's a... You 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 go to the takeaway, so you get it straight away, don't yes, you? That's that's a, that's a that, different that factor. That takes pressure. Than what that does in the fact of like the ingredients in there tastes good. They've got a good flavour. It goes together well. I have it to tastes, say, look, looking at it, that, that does look better. I would have I would have gone with that one as the premium. I one. think what we've established, and this is probably this is to your favour. You can't believe what it said on the. What, what, what takeaway app, just eat or whatever. Yeah, You've got it. to only listen to what Danny's got to say. Like, like, <laughs> that's surely that's the answer to all of this. But like I say every time, it is my opinion. So in my opinion, out of the two, that's the better one. Crystal clear, man. That's the better one. And it's just just the quality of stuff, the cheese in there, the bacon's better. If you, I mean, if you hold them up, I mean, I'm not being funny, but come on. <laughs> Look at state of that. I suppose, you know, for the, for the audio listener, for the ones that are just listening, uh, Danny's got. I'm in, holding up sausages in, here. In one, in one hand, he's got I'll a very that one. herby looking sausage, so like it looks like a quite a well made sausage, and then in in the good one, which was actually the bad one, it's just your traditional sort of. It looks a bit like it's overcooked that one as well. It looks like a Richmond's sausage that's been chucked in a deep fat fryer. Can you just stop bashing Richmond? But Mrs. Beard really wants that sponsorship deal. Oh, they are absolutely honking. She loves them. the skinless ones. <laughs> yeah. Well, we know that uh, Mrs. Beard's sort of palette is not as broad as most, is it? You said it's if it's in if it's basically the same colour as your jumper, <laughs> she'll eat yeah, it. She'll eat. So, back to bungle again. <laughs> yeah. Back to bungle. Ah, so. What a, what a, a, a fruitful piece of content. Uh, well, we'll take these out of here and we'll move on with the podcast then. You better do because I'm going to eat them. I'm going to be rash brown. <laughs> Don't let us stop you. Right, we're back. So we've rated that. That, that went down very well. It smells good in here now. Oh, nice. Yeah. Beard, I've got something to tell you, mate. I know you've been away for a while, but uh, unfortunately, <laughs> I've cheated on you. All right. That's like that. That's the self proclaimed Jolly Fat Man rang me up a couple of weeks ago. Oh, yes. And said, uh, Josh, I'm doing a, a Christmas song. Is for that your charity. impression of his voice? Yeah. Well, come on. We'll oh, give sorry. it something. Come on, Josh. Come on. Come on. <laughs> now, now then, Josh. Now then, Josh. I'm doing a Christmas song for charity, and uh, my cameraman's dropped out. So do you fancy uh, taking on the job? It'll only be a little one. I says, oh, I'll have to ring. I'll ring out. And I went, nah, forget Adam. Forget the garlic bread. So of course, daddy. Oh, man, you've got to make a living, pay for this place. Yeah. So daddy, do you want to tell us a little bit about your uh, well, Christmas? I actually dropped charity in about seven times just to make it clear that it was going to be free work. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> it's, the, it's the old uh, Yorkshire war cry, isn't it? Yeah. How much? So I'll do it for charity. Fuck, fuck it. <laughs> so, and then... I come up to meet him and, and I said, as soon as I walked in, we, we need to do a front cover as well, mate. First, that needs to be done by 12. So I just sort of dropped that on his toes. Uh, and obviously, you know, I've, I've, I've seen podcasts, you two knocking about, and he's got a decent reputation. And, you know, he's getting stuff done. So I thought, let's just see how good he is. You know, he was dishonorably discharged from the Navy. You know <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so so basically the the, the, the Christmas song, it, we, we were just mucking about one day. And obviously in... in, in the reviews that I do, I'm in the car and I'm walking about and I'm always singing and changing the words to food and that and then the editor will put a bit of a squeak on it and this and just a bit of fun, me being daft. So we said, oh, I'll do a Christmas song. Now, I bumped into Toddler T and a lot of people go, who's Toddler T? But he's actually a decent fellow. He, he does a bit with... Uh, is that his real name or is it like a, a pseudonym? Yeah, well, he's from Sheffield. Gino's mate. Oh, all right, okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So his beautiful wife, Annie Mack, I met her down in London and she says, can you come and uh, have a photo with, with toddlers? So I says, yeah. So chatting away to him and then obviously found out that uh, he was this platinum producer. And uh, I went, I asked him if they'd come onto the channel and do a special guest. So I went down and, and rated a falafel wrap with him. And I just mentioned it to him and said, hey, up and I suppose, you know, me, me being cheeky like a wheel, don't suppose you, you fancy doing a charity, charity song, do you? And he were well up for it. He's like, yep, I've got songwriting. I've got, the, you know, sort all this out. And it has just been a whirlwind of a ride. It's been absolutely amazing. He uh, went down, I went down to, to the studio and he got songwriter in there, Jin Jin, lovely woman. She, you know, sat there putting the melody together and all this and putting the song together. And it was just absolutely great to be a part of it. And also the aim of it is it's, it's for charity. So it's a bit of a fun. Me being fally, fat, fat, well, fally, fat, jolly. <laughs> You've been fally. Fally, fally, fally. You've been eating the sausages, but like steady yeah. on now. That's it. I'm getting giddy now because I've got a bit of food inside the belly. That's what it is. Uh, but but yeah, so, you know, just me being fat, jolly fella, 
singing a bit of a, a daft, cheesy Christmas song. I uh, feel that. I can feel that. Yeah, and, and hopefully, you know, out of it comes some decent proceeds that's going to go to charity to help people out for the Trussell Trust Trussell and for Mind. Yeah. Uh, because, again, with a channel, it's, you know, obviously we, we, we're dealing with food uh, and it's it's helping people with their mental health. So those are, the, those are the two charities that sort of stuck out. So, yeah, and then obviously I dropped it on Josh and, 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 and Mike to... Uh, Film the video, and he says, yeah, but he's not here. Adam's not here. He's off filming. He won't mind. So, yeah. I don't mind. If anything that's for charity. <laughs> it's like that guy on Twitter who thinks you employ me. It's like, oh, there's some guy on Twitter, like, oh, yeah, nice one, beer for keeping Josh in the job. I thought, you cheeky bastard. Yeah. I might better keep that illusion going. I, guess. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I did say if there's any cost, just to stick it on your bill. But <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. I'm happy with that if it's for charity. Yeah. There you go. So, yeah. But, so I mean, I, I should say, even though it's for charity, um, I'll be releasing my own Christmas single this year and I personally hope that I fuck you up pretty badly. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, no, joking, no I'm joking. I'm joking. I think for my, on my side, I thought if I divide and conquer, at least one of you might be able to knock the lad baby off the charts because he's had number one for three years now. Yeah, fuck that, that dude. No, so, yeah. I'm joking, I'm joking. Yeah, fuck that dude. What are you guys <laughs> <laughs> yeah. to, to be to be uh, to be corny, the real winner is, uh, is, is charity, right? So um, especially yeah. this time of year when people are... No, absolutely. And, I mean, do you want to tell us a little bit about the song? I mean, I obviously know, but can you, for the listeners, can you tell us a little bit about the song and what, how it all like, yeah, the lyrics? Yeah, so it goes back to it. No, it's, there's no story like that. <laughs> uh, so, so basically, it's just, obviously, we put it together and it's just takeaways, you know, what does Santa want? What does he want for the takeaway? So we just put these lyrics together and it's just absolutely crazy. To be honest, do they make sense? I don't really know. You know, I've been it, listening to the song objectively. I don't think it do make sense, but then neither do Red Hot Chili Pepper songs. Yeah. So... And it's, you know, I'm hanging with my mate, Paula Bear and all this. And it's like, it's just a bit of fun. And it's just to try and put a bit of joy into people's hearts. But the thing is, it's a catchy tune. That's the problem. I mean, I, I, I'm comparing it, mate. It's going to be the Christmas version of Baby Shark. It's going to drive every parent nuts. Well, that's, not a, that's not a good tagline. It's, it's better than the Baby Shark song. Well, but. yeah. You know, and it, it's going to drive people crazy. They're going to be in pub at New Year, absolutely blasted. Singing my song, I on, can on tell the, you now. On the oh, sesh yeah. singing it. Oh, yeah. Wouldn't that be a feeling? That'd be cool. To be fair, yeah. I can actually see it because it's such a, it is a catchy tune. What's it's the you, song? I, 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 don't, don't give it away. Is it out yet? It's, it's out, out now. Yeah, oh, it's out. Yeah. Is it? So should we give it a little go? Yeah, go on. What does Santa want for a takeaway? What does Santa want on his plate? What does Santa want for a takeaway? And then it goes into Pies, Peas. For me. This is it, mate. We've just branched out from podcast to live lounge. We That's can, it. We, Whoa. We, we can like we can put up as a clip on uh, on the YouTube channel and call it like rate my takeaway unplugged. <laughs> That's a cappella. That's it. Yeah. So do, so, do do you actually solve the question of what Santa wants for the takeaway? Do we do we come to a is conclusion? Is it pies? Is it peas? Is it past? Do, do we know which one it is? Santa don't know. Just give him some cheese. So cheese is the answer. Cheese is yeah. the answer. Why he likes cheese? I don't know. I think it's because obviously me having kids that I dress up as Santa and I love cheese. Yeah, who doesn't? <laughs> so, what's so your favourite? What's your favourite type of cheese? Oh, I, I love a bit of brie. Love a bit of yeah. brie. I love it, and you know, get it in that over, get it melted a little bit as well. I love it. But uh, I also like. I'm, I'm quite a fan of the. I, I love a really, really strong mature cheddar. And there's one that they sell down at market called Black Bomber, oh, and yeah. it is absolutely amazing. I love that. Do you like that? What's that stuff that reeks? Rock Fort. Rock yeah. Fort. Yep. And Stinking Bishop. Yep. But you can, I could eat those, man, yeah. yeah a bit of honey on them, a bit of honey, a bit of something sweet with them. They just know, reek, but, but like they taste good. Christmas time, that's when you can get a bit mixed up because you can have Stinking Bishop and Bishop's Finger. <laughs> <laughs> you know, your beer. It, you know, well, that's it, a beer? That's a relief. I thought yeah. it was supposed to... Is that what it is? I don't know what it was. <laughs> it's definitely going to go find out now while we're here for Christmas. Hey, yo, so Christ then, what do you want? Christmas do. Um, oh, you, you were just talking about the lyrics and the accolades of these of the writers of the, of this song, but I can only assume that either you or one of your kids has, has put in for, for the part that you could never get right. So we should probably <laughs> say that we've actually filled this Christmas song. Oh, God. And there's one line that I threw, I don't know, at 50, Mike, 100 takes maybe. Probably 1,000. I'm hanging with me, mate, the polar bear. Let's have some dinner at the table and share. Good job, he's brushed his hair. That must be written <laughs> by a three-year-old. No. <laughs> So how it happened is, and again, obviously, I've never done anything in music in my life. I'm just one of these guys. You know, you're in car, aren't you? You're bombing down road, you know, 
you, you, you've got a bit of music on and you're best singing it well. There's nobody there and you're singing it to a T. In your head, you're absolutely spot on. The weird thing is now when I sing this in car to myself, I'm thinking, don't I sound like that? <laughs> <laughs> so, but no, so we sat there and we're coming up with these lyrics and I just thought, like, they said, oh, what should we do? And I went, well, I'm with me mate, the polar bear. I have some dinner at my table and chair. Good job, he's brushed his hair. <laughs> and, and then there was something else about his man being happy and we took that bit out because right. it just didn't sound right. I've got to say though, that's still a better rhyme than any Kanye West song <laughs> like ever. I thought you were going to like hammer Ed Sheeran oh, or something. Oh, president. Like, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I brushed his hair. Yeah, but like, we, so we, I just we've, got this image of a polar bear brushing his hair. Yeah, I'll show you like, the takes afterwards. We, must we should have had you as the polar bear brushing the hair. Oh. That's what we should have done. Brushing the beard. He, he could yeah. not get the polar bear. He, he says you look pasty, so you're not right. <laughs> Yeah. He could not get the lyrics out like on any oh. take. I, I feel that, like, man. I feel it's I think the, we've not finished the final edit yet. I think we've had to cover it up with like a dancing elf or something because he just couldn't get it out, could he? I just, for some reason, it was just like a mind blank and I couldn't do it. And I could stand there before we were rolling. And it's there. And then I start singing and it's like... Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, it's hard, man, sometimes. It's stuff like that. Did yeah. you feel when we were recording in the White Rose Centre, I mean, you, you're, you're obviously not an easily embarrassed person, yeah. but did you feel a bit like this is a bit too far now? Or were you, did you, like, were you happy with it? No, to be honest, it, it, it don't bother me. I'm like, you know, I'm all for entertainment. So, <laughs> you know, jumping about like a raving lunatic dressed as a big fat fella in a Christmas suit, it, it didn't really... Uh, didn't phase me, but it, it was, was more so. so just trying to remember the words and the fact that I probably looked like a weirdo because the song was playing in my pocket <laughs> and then I was shouting it out, which I didn't really need to. You could have just mimed it. Yeah, I could yeah. have mimed it, but I was they're like, sing it so we can get it right. So I'm like, all right. Pies, please, man. <laughs> <laughs> there were people turning around looking. It's all ladies. Like, That's oh, part that? of the best part. that you, you show me like a little kind of, uh, like the uh, or Mike showed me the the... It's not finished yet, right? But the basic structure yeah, of the yeah. video. And the parts that were cracking me up with is when Danny's walking like in the White Rose Center and they, they'll just go past like an old woman and she'll be like, what the fuck? Yeah. Like that, and turn and look at her, she doesn't know what's going on. One of the funniest things that happened that day wasn't actually involving Danny. We'd asked it, I probably shouldn't mention this on the, because it might get some views this podcast, but there was this young lass who works at the grotto. And she did, like bless oh. her, she'd allowed us to- Santa's Grotto, yeah. Santa's Grotto, yeah. Not, not the Playboy Grotto. We were on like the top- top level of the of the white rose up in like the food court area and she comes up and speaks to us and says yeah you know boss has said it's all right for you for you to use it and we're like oh yeah thank you and she's all young lass she turned around and walked straight into this pillar oh, like, face boom. planted <laughs> and we were like oh, yeah Did you get it on camera that's no, what i said <laughs> that's exactly what i said <laughs> but no poor lass she did proper like face plant and then just oh sorry and carried yeah. on and i mean, so. I mean you were laughing a bit weren't you Nah, I, you know what? If you, you watch can't help with all when stuff like that happens, can you? Yeah, she 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 shouldn't be embarrassed. I thought that'd have been two hundred and fifty quid straight in bag <laughs> if we'd have got that on camera for her. <laughs> you got bonus. We mentioned that Daddy is the lovable guy that you see here, but he's a very cheeky guy as well. So yeah. all this was supposed to be done within a day of filming, and we're currently three and a half days into filming, and That's right. it's still not complete. All for charity, will all done. for charity? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but what, what the first thing he asked me when he walked in? So this is when I first met him. He's like, "Oh yeah, you know." Um, we just need to we just need to knock up a quick uh, album art cover for the song, and I was like, <laughs> "We we need to do that." It sounds well, like you and your team need to do that. But I goes, "All right, we'll do it." So we're, we're like brainstorming ideas. What can we do? He's in this ridiculous suit. I've seen the suit, man. And oh, you have to tell me where you got that. I might wear it on Christmas oh, Day. There's loads. Mike, <laughs> did you? Who came up with it? Who came up with this idea for uh, trying to do a copy of um, Mariah Carey? Were it you? Yeah. So Michael, like, why don't we try and like recreate Mariah Carey's oh. without getting like a copyright strike or whatever. And this is an exclusive for you, Adam, because you won't have seen it yet. What do you think of that? <laughs> <laughs> That's because why are you covering your balls? That's, That's the thing. thing. It, Did she, you have like, you had like a, a semi on at the time you had to cover no. it up? So. She, she was sort of going like that, but for some reason I'm sort of clinching on. I'll be honest with you, getting a fat fella in a position like that and they kept saying, can you lean back a bit? I thought my life were ending. <laughs> I thought somebody had just cranked a big bit of wood up the back of my spine. I'm sat on my own ankles thinking, do you know what? There's 20 stone of me on here. I'm going to be dead in a minute. <laughs> that is a good, it's worth it though. It's worth the pain because that's a good album cover. I can't wait for the album cover to be on the wall in the studio. In fact, we'll put it there. We'll take that yeah, down. Yeah. Is that Platinum the, Is that the woman that I was talking about, that old woman's face? <laughs> yeah, it's the one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put it up on screen. Yeah. Put that on screen, yeah. Yeah, it's a cracker, that, innit? Bless you. 
Yeah, we got some looks at White Rose that day. It, it, it was fun. It was fun, and and uh, you know a lot of the public, you know, the, some of them were just looking at me like, "What's this weirdo doing?" And then a lot of them were just sort of joining in with fun, really. And and some of them were bopping away, weren't they? And, yeah, and, and, that's good, man. That's what you want at Christmas. Yeah. You know? I think the one that stole the show on the video for me was the the young the other elf from the grotto. Like she gave oh. us a performance. Yeah, like, that yeah. was a, that's some some going from that young. Well, lady. she flung the door open at, at the back and. Uh, like letting out some little kid like who'd just seen Santa and she's all giddy way and all this and I says to her, I hope you're going to be like that when we're coming here filming and she went, I am Danny, I love you, I watch it all the time. So I'm thinking, <laughs> yes, we're here, we're on here. So as soon as we went in, she was just off her head. She was loving it, proper dancing about, giving it some. She and, made it. And the Santa, what is it? <laughs> what is it? Oh, it was class, but it took a bit to get what is it out of him. Because the, the final lyrics are... What? What is it? So that's all he had to say, but he didn't say it once. <laughs> what did he say? Something else? He just kept saying. What we said to him, can you just say what? What is it? So he went, yeah. What is it? What is it? <laughs> what is it? What is it? I mean, he's got a fake beard on, so you can't really tell yeah. what his mouth's doing that much, can you? Oh, right. Mr. Trick, we should reshoot this. You should be Santa. Yeah. Like like a young hip, you know, like when they got Captain Birdseye and they they, they they removed the old guy with the grey beard and they made it like a handsome, young, yeah, yeah. ripped guy with the black beard. <laughs> ripped. They could oh. do that, yeah. With <laughs> <laughs> formerly, they could, we, they could do that with, uh, with, 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 with formerly, the, uh, yeah, like a surfer dude. That's done his surf boys did it's lay. Man, I, I'm really, really excited to see where both of your songs. We're going to talk about yours in a future yeah. episode, but I'm, I'm excited to see where yours lands in the well, chart. I've heard, a, I've heard a little piece. Obviously, I've heard well, his, his, that, Danny's, will be, Danny's will be in the chart. Like mine's self released, so I'm not in. The, I won't be in the chart, but you know, oh, you can still download it anyway. Yeah, here we go. He's making excuses already. He's had a go at your week card. He's now having a go at me for releasing <laughs> song in iTunes. No, no, I thought I'd say that. Come on, Bumble. I'll be on iTunes. I just won't be in the in the, in the charts. <laughs> Right, so we're going, to, we're going to wrap up this podcast now. Yep. Um, we put it out to our audience, which is surprising that we've actually got an audience uh, for this podcast. Given... It's me, mate. That's why I said, bring me on. <laughs> Just asking yourself questions. So yeah. we've, we've asked them, we've said, right, if you've got any questions for him, let us know. So we'll, we'll, we'll rattle through these. Um, the first one is from Mrs. Beard. All right. Yeah. She said, you best ask him his favourite place to eat garlic bread. Just, so, I, can't, I can't, I can't, I can't overstate the, the importance of this because she said before I left the house this morning she said you make sure you find out where he says does the best garlic bread um, in around this area so All no right. pressure but so garlic bread so in here in, in Morley there's a restaurant Sambuca's that's a restaurant yeah, yeah. Sambuca's right, yeah. it's named after a drink yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. and they do some more like garlic bread in there Sambuca's in Morley right okay give it a go that's, that's a beauty is that like so Sambuca's is the answer then in Morley I'll, that, I'll forget Fair dues. Well, you can just rewind. <laughs> oh, yeah, <there> you go. <laughs> right, so Joe Murray Funk. So Joe, um, he's the guy that helped design the actual the branding for, for the podcast. He asked, hi Joe, uh, he asked, what's your biggest gripe when ordering the takeaway? His is putting cold cold drinks in the same bag. For me, it's actually when they put salads in a little food bag and it just goes soggy and mushy. Like, why did they do that? I think it, it's like, so the sandwich I've just had, with the tomatoes in, that's just turned it really, really soggy. I think sometimes, like with burgers, they can put that much stuff in them. And you'll probably have this. You can't even pick it up. It's sliding here, there, oh, and everywhere. Yeah. That, and that's a bit of a gripe I have sometimes. You know, the quantity sometimes can just ruin the meal. If it's too big, if they build yeah. it too big and put too much sloppy stuff in, you can't eat it as a burger. You've got to get knife and fork out, haven't you? Too many cooks spoil the broth. Absolutely. Mm. As they say. Uh, family heart fun food asked what's the fanciest takeaway you got that didn't taste as good as it looked oh fanciest one that is a great question by the way who was that uh family heart fun food can we give him a top fan badge or something like that because that's a really good question yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, i think it, so this was one of the other lowest scores that i got so it was back in the beginning and, and we went to uh, the hometown of barnsley so all giddy thinking my first review Went to a dessert place and it looked amazing. And I'm thinking, oh, this is all right. And then when I just ate it, oh, it's horrible. It, it, it just didn't taste how it would look. These desserts, the waffles, they were rock hard. And I, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, they've got these bourbon biscuits that probably smart price from Tazda sprinkled <laughs> on top. It just, it, it, and it, you know, like the cameraman, he's just sat there and I, I just look so drained because I'm thinking I was so giddy at going back and it was a nice big place and all these desserts and I thought, it's just in right. 
It's just in right. So yeah, it's a dessert place in Barnsley. Dessert place. Barnsley. You mentioned yeah. the cameraman there. And yeah. obviously he's in a, he's like, nobody knows what it looks like. But I, it's I, like the Stig from Top Gear. He is like yeah. the Stig. Not that I used to watch Top Gear. You know what he is actually like? He is a little exclusive. He looks like the guy from... Oh! From... No! Can I say it? <laughs> no! You can't give it out. Oh. No, you can't say it. Not, so he looks like someone. He does. Yeah. We'll, bleep, we'll bleep all this out. He looks like... The What's brother. wrong with saying that? Why, why can't we say that? Because then people know what he looks like. Yeah, well... He, they'll, they'll be hounding him. What's it's quite unique. People look, oh, he looks a little bit like... Yeah. <laughs> the cameraman on Rip, my takeaway. Yeah. Right, okay. Next question from quote underscore the underscore mank. So quote the mank asked, how has fame affected you and your family? We touched on it briefly before, but. Yeah, so obviously it's helped us through a difficult time. So, it's, you know, I can't thank people enough for for, for watching it and, and continue to watch it because it, it's, it's helped us move on in a difficult time. Well, so just like not sort of move on, yeah. but sort of like look forward to the best things that, that we can. That's um, really nice. I mean, it's obviously unthinkable what, what you yeah. went through, the highest of, like, the lowest of lows and then through to the highest of highs, you know. Yeah, and it's obviously, if if this hadn't happened, I would, I'd still be working a full-time job, which would be more stressful because I wouldn't be able to spend as much time as I do with my children. Absolutely. So it's it's allowed me to, to sort of spend that quality time really with my family, which I appreciate more than anything. That's amazing. Cam Chana asked... Uh, do you eat anything healthy when you're not filming Rate My Takeaway? Absolutely love salad. <laughs> I, I thought that was a joke. I didn't want to laugh. But. <laughs> no, through summertime I do, but I like, you know, jacket potatoes and stuff like that. So I just, when I'm not filming, just try and keep it without, you know, to be honest, I don't really enjoy takeaways now, if I'm yeah. honest, because I'm eating that many. It's not, I won't think, oh, do you know what? I'll go get a bit of burger or a kebab. You know what I mean? But I, I love uh, Sunday dinners yeah. and I love pasta I love bolognese and lasagna and stuff like that so I'll, I'll usually cook those kind of meals at home nice one right uh, James McClaw has asked uh, what would be your last meal ooh that's a good death one. row or whatever it would be yeah so you're on death row right you're about to get the, the lethal cocktail of injections ooh. what you choose I'm, I'm just setting the scene you're not actually on <laughs> death row you, uh, you get to choose a meal what's it going to be for me it would be home cooked chips Nice. All right. Deep fried, are we talking like, we're not talking like McCain's, right? We're talking like deep fried. Yeah, proper, you know, and cut, deep fried. Nice. Prop, proper chips, lathered in salt and vinegar. Fat as peas, I love them. Like processed peas, boil, boil the heck out of them. Oh, those ones that come out, they look like grey. They're not even green anymore, they're like grey. <laughs> no, they're green. They <laughs> got a bit blue. <laughs> and then it's got to be a beautiful, big, thick ribeye steak. I love ribeye. Absolutely beautiful. I, I like the marbling on it. I love that nice bit of fat. So that would be like my last sort of meal with a treacle sponge and custard. Oh, that that's, is, a so, that's a solid, mate. I'm yeah, putting it there. Bang. That's, that is a meal. That's a proper English meal as well, that's right? Solid, that, yeah. That's, I fancy like that. We should go for dinner after Treak, this. Treacle yeah. sponge as well after that. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, Tanitz04 has asked, when are you getting a new chair? <laughs> well, when this one breaks, which, you know, it could be any day. I saw you in Birmingham on one of your videos and you looked yeah. like you were going to topple over oh, on that roundabout. I swear to God, there's a bit of wobble on it. <laughs> So that I think well, like one of the pins, I think it's going, so it ain't going to be long. But I've decided that we'll, we'll just hang out until it goes. If so, you, the best thing, the best case scenario would be if you get the moment it breaks on camera and you're eating some food, it's just like, yeah. backwards off your seat. Yeah. So, and you can bet your bottom dollar it'll be some, like, you know, when we do US tour or something like that, oh, you yeah. know, when I can't just go to the and get another one. You know, you're missing a trick here. We need to get rate my takeaway chairs, fold out chairs. Well, that's it, yeah. Watch the merch, do <laughs> There better be a chair on there now. <laughs> uh, so Tom J Man 8 has asked, does the cameraman ever get fed? We've touched on that earlier. Yeah, yeah, he does. So obviously he'll, he'll pile straight into the phone when I've done. Uh, he gets in there and obviously some, some other stuff is like, he'll, he'll say to me, don't touch that side of it. I want that sign. <laughs> 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 That's what I mean. But yeah, he does get fed. Yeah, People that- think he don't get fed, but he does. Ah, he does. You can see he's a unit. He's, it looks like he's been lifting like you. You've not seen. You'll never see him, will you? But he must be bigger uh, than me. I'm only little. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Chadwick has asked if you could open a takeaway of your own, what would it be? Oh, what does it mean? Awesome. Like what kind of cuisine? Um, that that yeah. was the question. So we can. Yeah. It, I mean, to be honest, I think you know the the way that the takeaways are going. It like the the burger scene at the moment is pretty popular, and and coming into like the gourmet burgers and stuff like that. But I think I'd like to do something that could switch it up. I think, you know, you, you know, you could like one month do burgers and one month do curries and, 
You know, I think that'd be yeah. pretty cool where you, you didn't know uh, what the menu is. Nightmare that though for stocking, wouldn't it be? You have to, each month you're going to have different stuff. Yeah, yeah. So I, like, I reckon you should do it. I would totally eat at the rate my takeaway takeaway if um, <laughs> yeah. if it was like proper like English English group. Like you do, I mean, you wouldn't know. So like really the steak, get, chips you, and peas. You wouldn't really get steak as a takeaway, would you? But what about like some... Oh, no, ho- there, there are some steak takeaways out there. Yeah, there's not one so far away from here. I don't yeah. think that would travel too well. But yeah. I mean, I'm thinking like maybe like shepherd's pie, pie and peas, that yeah, kind of thing. Yeah. You know, oh, there steak and ale pie. Oh, how's that? A bit of steak and I love yeah. pies. Yeah. As you can tell, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be neat. Yeah. yeah. You'd, you'd clean the floor at this time of year. Now it's getting a bit colder, isn't it? Yeah. That's the thing. It's like, so a lot of the cafes now, obviously they do specials, don't they, with stews and bolognese and all that kind of stuff, chilies and that, and they do a lot They do a lot better doing them at dinner time yeah. this time of year than they do through, through the day doing the you sandwiches. Could, I could see you could do like a like Mr. Beast house. You know, he's got all those ghost kitchens. He doesn't actually have restaurants. Yeah. So has ghost kitchens. You could do yeah. like a Rate My Takeaway brand and you just sell out of like a... Hey, we, well, need Frank own, Bennis, we need to send him an invoice for consultancy. Yeah, yeah we're, we building the, <laughs> we're building the brand. I told you, mate, it's all for charity. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lindsay Walden asked, uh, well, she didn't really ask, she just made a statement and then every the comments hammered her, but she said, why does he give out so many tens? Some of the food he's eating looks awful. He doesn't even look like he enjoys it. Be more critical, exclamation mark. But then the comment section, uh, troll, troll along. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so basically, obviously, like I said, how the channel works is we're asking people to tell us what the best takeaways are. So, you know, I'm going to these places and they're all right. And when I first started out, you know, I went to these takeaways and they didn't have a clue and they're like, yeah, whatever. And obviously when I go now, a lot of them recognise me and I say to them, look, you know, don't overdo it. Because we've had one that they give me a massive monster box and then when somebody went and said, I want that one, he had. Yeah. Nowhere near as big. So, you, you know what I mean? It, it, it's down to them. But the reason why I give the tens is because it's, it's quality stuff. And it is my opinion. You know what I mean? But also, it's like, like I said, I'm taking into consideration, you know, the service, how it is inside, you know, when it comes to me, is it piping up? You know what I mean? Because some takeaways, it's like, you'll know yourself, you can go to a chicken shop and it's probably been sat there for three hours in a warmer and it's, and it's, not, it's not right warm when yeah. you get it. It's not as if it's come out fresh, is it? So I'm looking at all that kind of stuff and incorporating it all into the rating. But but the main thing is the service. I find wherever you go, if it's a takeaway, a cafe or whatever, if you walk in and somebody's like, good morning, how are you doing? What would you like today? How's yeah. your day been? You just feel more at ease and straight away you're in that, oh, this is great. If you walk it, what can I get you, pal? Yeah. What do you want? Yeah, in addition to that, I think you, we were talking about this before. I, there's an element as well. Like, okay, you might not want to give tens out all the time, but... Uh, by the same token, you're not going to just go in and be like, oh, this is a two out of 10 because you have like a responsibility, I think anyway, especially if you're a nice bloke to not end somebody's career, you know? Yeah, yeah. Because like, mm-hmm. you, know, you never know what's happened. They might have a, an off day or whatnot and you don't want to go in and say, oh, this is a terrible takeaway. So although it might not be, it might be a bit disingenuous, right? To say this is like an eight out of 10 when maybe it's a six out of 10. There's a, there's a, I think there's a reason for it. And it's not, it, the reason is that you're a nice bloke and you don't want to, yeah, I agree. I think, yeah, like people said about, will you go around and, and rate the worst takeaways? I just don't know if that's me. I just yeah. don't know if I can, Yeah. you know, it's, it's like somebody's livelihood. And, and like you say, they have good days and bad days. And, and do you really want to go in there and, and, and effectively end? Yeah, absolutely. What, what, what they're doing. Uh, and it, it's like, you know, in my opinion, all right, and some stuff, it, you know, it's been absolutely bang on. So it's like the, the two sandwiches there, you know what I mean? You know, that one, it were all right, we're decent, eh? It were yeah, a nice yeah. basic sandwich. And the other one, a lot of better ingredients, tasted a lot better. That's my opinion. You, yes. you you could try that one and think that is absolutely bang on. So our editor, he prefers all the cheap, nasty sausages. You know, he prefers all that yeah. than, than the other ones. So he, he would have rated that a 10 and probably give that an 8. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because it's all about personal preference. So when people are saying, oh, why? Yeah, you might not get it a 10. But at the end of the day, it's, it's entertainment. It's I'm, I'm giving my opinion. Shut the fuck up, guy. <laughs> <laughs> so was it a guy or a woman? Uh, a lady. Oh, lady right. called Lindsay. <laughs> oh, well. We'll have you at the table, <laughs> Lindsay, love. We'll have you as a guest. By, by the way, Lindsay, we're only joking. So you've it's like, down it's a little bit, relax. <laughs> He's off, isn't he? I know, you're going to get it. What are you going to <laughs> Right, the last question from uh, Mr. William Rowland. Why do you think Beard doesn't have a blue tick on Twitter? <laughs> well, obviously, he's just not got the reach, has he? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I hate to do this to you, Mr. Rick, my takeaway, yeah. but you're not verified on Instagram, and I am, so... Is that, is that true, is it? What's Instagram? 
Do you have an Instagram? <laughs> Right, well, right, right. we've yeah, got this yeah, in the yeah, corner yeah, yeah. of the room. That's why, because I've not started it much yet, but when we get that You'll next week, we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll start it. You start it now, and by the time this comes out, we'll put the handle on the screen. Here. When's this coming out? Uh, when, whenever about, about a couple of weeks, is it? We, we were, obviously, those listening, we're going to be, we're recording this a couple of weeks behind when the song I'll comes out. I'll just get shout out to editor. We need to be on Spotify next week, top one. <laughs> it, needs <to> be out, <laughs> it needs to be out when your Christmas single goes out, but... That concludes this. Uh, that was a flipping good one. Thank you very much. Do you think we've do you think we've sort of nailed it with this first guest? We've oh just... yeah, for sure. I, mean, I don't know. If we can go any higher. Um, so we just know, I know more guests now. That's it done. Yeah, we'll let's p- just create a new one. Pro- we, we probably <laughs> pick, we probably picked too high, but another host. That's yeah. it. We'll just what, yeah. When I get, when I sod off to uh, wherever I go in January, just get Danny in for a couple of episodes. I'll just, I'll guest just not host. shave for a few weeks. <laughs> <laughs> you can be the guest host. I don't know if I can slim down. <laughs> <laughs> any final comments from Mister Beard? No, I am just really, really happy that the building did not collapse while we were both in it. Because I was thinking, driving over, I'm thinking, imagine if this rickety old mill collapsed with the two of us in here, the Leeds YouTube scene would be fucking done. Oh. It'd be over with. Do you mean three? Three of us? Yeah, three. Sorry. Yeah, so three. You, you forget mm. me. Um, no, no, it's been, a, it's been a pleasure having you on, mate. Yeah. I've been like four Thank fist now. But um, Bosh. Bosh. I hope we did it justice because a lot of people, like I said, the two names that came out of the hat when we asked were Eddie Hall and uh, rate my takeaway, but you were the, I mean, yours was, your name was mentioned a lot more and uh, Eddie Hall's probably too famous for us, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's been a good one. Yeah. Thank you guys. It's been an absolute pleasure. I'm glad you enjoyed it, mate. You're you welcome back anytime as we know you're very, very local and no yeah. doubt you'll be knocking on the door. Well, oh, that's I've got it. Just... charity job coming up in <laughs> summer. I've got to talk to you about. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, everybody for, <laughs> thanks everybody for listening and watching. Obviously you can check out Rate My Takeaway everywhere check out his merch store buy the charity t-shirt we're going to buy one we'll wear it on a christmas special uh podcast you can find us at beard meets no you're at beard meets food at breaking bread podcast <laughs> well, we're we tag team now <laughs> 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 that work for you and yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll catch you on the next one cheers peace <laughs>